All right, there we go. Nobody heard you munching away. But if you want to go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> mm, okay. Just be munching. I do, I, do, I do this just for the people. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm here for the ASMR, Sunstream, Mukbang, you know, quality content. Sipping some coffee. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good. Lurping. Lurping. Yeah, I had some some toast with Nutella. <sighs> Nutella is disgusting. How did we become friends? <laughs> I took pity on you. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I was like, we this kid. Friends. <laughs> this kid. This kid needs a. Uh, he needs some help in bot lane. I, I gotta support him. If if I can if I can if I can pull this guy. To platinum then i know i'm really good of course i never i was never able to do that was i nope <laughs> no. nope fortunately you could never accomplish that no which oh. tells us that you aren't that good <laughs> i'm just not good enough <laughs> not good enough uh. that back is not strong enough <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> that back was breaking for like seven years trying <laughs> Leona was <laughs> stooped over in her old age. Uh, <laughs> she is, she's having a hard time. Yeah, yeah. Hello, hello, Verso. Hawk Gaming. Matouche. How y'all doing today? Good to see you. Playdna, hey, is she any good? Playdna. People just firing away with the questions. Not even like a hello, just like, hey, I got a champion. <laughs> she any good? Tell me about her. I, I've been I've been waiting. Um, so I'm looking at her. I don't own her, by the way. Um, but let me take a look. She seems pretty solid. Um I'm trying to get five stars here. I have three stars here on the thing. Let's see if I can do that. Just barely. But three stars is three stars. Okay, so let's go take a look at Clayton. Let's go take a look at our awards there. Howdy, Civic. Dan, Leah. Rebeater asking, is he going to get his takeover? Probably not, he says. But, you know, everybody's got their fingers crossed for you. Except for everybody else who put their name in. Maybe they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they are the exception. Cool. All right. High elves. Accuracy. Ogrins. Dwarves. The DNA stuff. All right, not too bad. All right, let's go take a look at Claydna here. So Claydna is Sylvan Watcher's uh, legendary, right? Yeah, there she is, Void Legendary. Cool looking, kind of like a a moth or something. I don't know. Got pine needles for wings though. Kind of funky. All right, let's take a look at her kit. Well, no, her stats are good. Twenty one thousand with thirteen hundred fifty four. Defense. She's an HP based champion. I wonder if she's support or like a damage dealer. Speed is 100, some resistant accuracy. She's got to sleep on her A1. 70% chance. That could be good in Sand Devil's Necropolis. Um, AoE decreased speed and leech and a heal. That could also be good. Block debuff buff and a revive on death. For all al allies for uh, two turns on a three turn cooldown. So, black debuffs is always nice. It's not a cleanse, but she does have a heal here with the leech. And then has a 30% chance of completely blocking the income damage of the first hit of an attack occurs once per turn. So, that's kind of like a, um, like a mini UDK skill, right? Looks like it books to 60%, 60% chance of blocking the incoming damage on the first hit of an attack once per turn. 
seems solid to me. Let's take a look at her reviews. <clears throat> okay, the fact that she's only a 3.2 in Sand Devil's Necropolis is a little bit strange with the sleep on the A1. There's one thing we've learned is how accurate those <laughs> in-game ratings are. Yeah, these in-game ratings don't strike me as strong enough to reflect her kid. I don't I don't think she got buffed at any point. Let's take a look at uh Hell Hades. See what he says. So she's rated as a four here, four out of five. Um, Sand Devils, four and a half. Hydra's four and a half. That AOE slow plays at the Hydra, right? The Leech probably plays as well. Blocking damage. I mean, it looks like it, she's kind of an all-arounder, right? She's she's pretty good in most places, although she doesn't have any five stars. So I guess it depends on where you are in your account and what you need on your roster. But she seems solid enough to me. Like, definitely not a trash champion, just probably maybe not super valuable if you're in the later part of the mid-game um, and you have her skills basically covered already. But definitely, she's definitely tanky. That, those are really nice tanky stats for an HP based champion. A lot of HP based champions, a lot of HP based champions will have high HP, but like their defense will be like, you know, 1,000 to 1,200. She's got 1,354, which is significant. So definitely tanky. <clears throat> oh, I got to redo my screen here. I try to, try to fit that so I can see chat. That's the whole point. See chat. Oh, did you try out the little uh, little thing I sent you? I did download it. I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. Um, uh... Actually, you know what? I didn't download it. I went to download it, and Google told me it contained a virus. So I didn't download. It. Yeah, of course it did, because it's an executable. <laughs> All right, so. Holy cow, a bunch of people showed up. Tributor, Leah, Great Dane, Civic. Sauce in the house, Caveman, Adrian Thomas. Good to see you. It's Charles. Hey, Charles. Joey, do you have any time for one more account? <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be doing two takeovers hopefully today. We'll be rolling the the wheel, spinning the wheel. Hey Ian, good to see you. Silver Bullet. I have Valkyrie, Kira, Monkey King, Claude, Kale, Rathalos, Ultimate Gaelic. Whom should I go with for my clan boss team? Um, I mean, out of, out of those, Kira, Valkyrie, Claude, Kale, and Rathalos probably make a decent team, although I don't think you have an HP burn there for Rathalos. Um... Valkyrie is fantastic for counterattacks and shields. Kira is an ally protector uh, with an increased defense. Claude has got some sustain. Kale's got the poisons. Rathalos has the direct damage. Uh, Ultimate Gaelic, you could pair with Rathalos, I guess, but I don't think that's, like, I don't think he's worth building, and you probably already have your Kale built, so that's what I would do. Um, unless you've already built him. If you've built him, then you could try either one. Just swap Kale with Ultimate Gaelic and see. Hey, Dark. Hey, Jax, Elfish, Simon, how do you get picked for an account takeover? Um, you have to sign up in our Discord, and we'll go over that in just a second, but just click on the link to uh, become a member of our Discord. And then once you're in the Discord, we're going to have a little drawing. <laughs> hey, Neo. <laughs> Two dollars from Neo, then buy yourself a taco. Go Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Buy myself a taco. Thank you. I will do so. I love tacos, actually. Son, are you a big taco guy? I, I love tacos. Heck yeah, I'm a big taco guy. I love yeah. tacos. I make all the tacos. All right. I, I like, um, do you prefer the crunchy tacos or the soft tacos? Ooh. 
You know, I think that there's a time like and a place. Pull. Oh, Dane with the gifted to Ian Godwin. There you go. Welcome. All right. The horde grows. The horde grows. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dane. Um, and welcome, Ian. Yeah, awesome. No, nah, man. I think there's there's a time and a place, but you got to be in the mood for crunchy tacos. Soft tacos, anytime. No problem. Crunchy tacos, you got to be somewhere. You got to be sitting down, you know. These things are a mess. What's up, Anthony? How you doing? Joey says pink tacos. Uh huh. Uh. Pause. <laughs> Jeez. Uh. I didn't realize till I read it. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. Classic mistake. Ian Godwin Leo, you're became the exact a member. opposite. Crunchy all the way. Soft. You've got to be in the mood. You need Jesus today. All right, there we go. There's our first poll of the day. I've been slacking on the polls. We need to have more polls. All right. So, <laughs> Neo, thanks, thanks for the donation. Starting off the taco conversation. Uh, great Dane, thank you for the gifted sub. And Ian Godwin, welcome. Welcome the Horde Grows. Um, yeah, so there's our there's our poll. You can choose what you like. Um full red strikes again. <laughs> Choco tacos. How is the prep for mini coal red going? The prep is uh it's chaos here. It's total chaos. Uh there are never enough hours in the day to do half the stuff I'm trying to do. Um, <laughs> use my Hydra keys. I will. I will tonight. I got to use all six of my Hydra keys. Well, I've got to uh, use like five of them. A lot of, a lot of people liking the, uh, the soft tacos. Amen. You know, if I could get crunchy tacos without the mess, I would like crunchy tacos more. It's just the mess. That's why you put them inside a soft taco. If you wrap no, the hard see, shell that's what I'm not, in the soft, right? then you don't yeah. then you don't lose the crunchy pieces. They don't go flying. Honestly, what we do, what we've done for the past several years, my wife and I, is we do uh taco salads. So Yeah. We, that's you know, you, you instead of getting like hard taco shells, you get um, like corn chips, you know? Yeah, just get some cheeps. Yeah, get some cheeps. 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 The Lord's cheeps. Um, yeah. Does anybody know that reference at all? Does anybody, <laughs> does one person in this stream know the reference? It'd be great if somebody did. Cheeps. Taco salad with Doritos, nacho cheese is the bee's knees. That sounds Silver filthy. Bullet says, I'm from Your Nepal. Part. Give a shout out, please. Welcome, Silver Bullet from Nepal. Shout out to Nepal, not the Silver Bullet. Just kidding. Silver Bullet, you're welcome to. <laughs> All right. So um, I want to get rolling today because we started a half an hour late because there was some there was some adjustments that need to be made around here um but let's go ahead so i'm gonna just walk you through this real quickly and then we'll give you a couple of minutes to sign up so basically if you've never done this before you want to click on the link to our discord you need to be a member of our discord in order to win a free takeover today and what you're going to do is on the left hand column you're going to scroll down until you see an area called the coaching corner when you get to the coaching corner in the coaching corner you're going to see a channel called the Wheel of Takeover. All you have to do is go into that room and react to the message that Sun has placed. Just react. You don't need to type. You don't need to say anything. You can just react. That's going to enter you into the drawing. It's going to put you on the wheel. Don't worry if you can't see your name on the wheel. There are only 50 visible spots on the wheel, but there are usually more than 50 people who are reacting. 
um, everybody is on the wheel and has an equal chance. Now, if you have won in the last 90 days, uh, which at this point, it basically means since January 1st, um, which is when we reset anyway, so we're getting to 90 days, I think. Yeah, it's like two more days. Um, then you can't win again. So you can win once every 90 days. Uh, for today's takeovers, um, I guess we'll open it up. I guess we'll do all the takeovers. Any takeovers available uh, that people want, that's fine with me. Yeah, and uh, so we're going to give people a couple of minutes to react to the Wheel of Takeover, and then we're going to spin it, and then we'll get our first started. Make sure that you have all your login information available, so make sure you've checked that you know what your email is and what your password is, so that you can DM me that as soon as you win your takeover. Literally, as soon as you win it, the first thing you need to do is send me a DM in Discord with your login information. Then Sun will give you permission to enter the log, uh, sorry, the coaching voice. So there's a coaching voice channel. You want to come and join the coaching voice so that you and I can talk in real time. You won't have uh, microphone access, but you can just type to me. But you'll be able to hear me in real time because there is a delay on the live stream. So mute your live stream and hang out in voice with me. And uh, then you can tell me what it is you'd like me to do for your account today. And we'll try to get that done. Uh-oh, pizza is going to take over the taco pole. That's a little... Maybe I shouldn't have put taco Sacrilege. there. I mean, I shouldn't have put pizza yeah. there. No, see, that's, know, that's just a decision for the day. Either you have tacos <laughs> or you have pizza. Well... It's Tuesday. Pizza's or... more... I mean, pizza's more of a Friday kind of thing. Tuesdays are tacos. Hold on. What? But what if... What if you have pizza on Monday... And then you have leftovers, so you have leftover pizza on Tuesday, and then tacos for dinner on Tuesday. And then that's you can have a, both? That's a day. That's what we live for. I gotta say, I'm not as big a fan of uh, leftover pizza as I used to be. I, I like it fresh and hot out of the oven. Like, I want to eat it within five minutes of it coming out of the oven. That's fair. Yeah. That is peak pizza. Yeah. So, not that I don't eat leftover pizza. Of course I'll eat leftover pizza, but like back in the day when I was in college and stuff, like we would order pizza that night and then in the morning you'd wake up and the pizza box would still be there and you'd look and there'd be a piece left and you'd be like, oh my God, morning pizza. That's the best thing ever. Now I'm like, yeah, no, nah, not so much. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to have a bowl of cereal and move on and save that slice for lunch maybe. Um, so yeah, but I do love pizza. I'm starting to respect the cold leftover pizza game more. Yeah. Not me. What do you like about it? I mean, it's just easy, and then it's more like it's just bread with cheese at that point. Even yeah. more than pizza is bread with cheese. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. But I don't know. Some pizzas, they just, you know, they taste better cold than warmed up again. Like that second reheat just... Just doesn't 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 go well for. Them. Here's the thing: if you don't like reheated pizza, it's probably because you re reheat it in the microwave. So no, don't, no, no, you gotta do it in gotta do it in the oven. Do Never the do oven. it in the microwave. That's, yeah, that's, do it in the oven. Worst case scenario, do it in like if you have a toaster oven, you could do it in a toaster oven too. But if you reheat in the oven, man, it's really good. And the thing about sad state of affairs. The thing about the second day pizza is you can break out your own toppings and start like you know, True. like doctoring up the. The leftover pizza, I like doing that. You know, that's a fair play. Yeah. Monday is meatloaf. Meatloaf Monday. I like that. That makes sense. I love meatloaf too. Meatloaf Mondays. Is that is that what we're doing? Yeah. Why not? Meatloaf Mondays. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, I am too. I'm all I'm all about it. How do you DM me in the Discord? All you have to do in the Discord to DM somebody is find that yeah they're on, they're on the right hand column you'll see the list of everybody who's like active in the server and you can literally just um left click on me and then you'll have an op down at the bottom it'll say send a message just do that or son were you going to tell them something different no that's it but i was going to say by the time if you've won and we haven't heard from you i'd be reaching out to guide you yeah. exactly through that You just got a Teodor. Congrats. 
Jose just got a Teodor. Very nice. Hey, Joseph. Did you happen to see the RNG uh, RG Temple earlier? We I had did some not. Arishkas. We had uh, we had some Arishkas. We had a, wow. We had a double newt pole, a double nut. It was powerful stuff. <laughs> somebody, somebody pulled two newts. Yeah, Civic in the chat. Civic, you pulled two newts. What the? Two newts. <laughs> First and fifth pull. The two newts. That's the insane. Nut. That's insane. That is, that is crazy. Well, congrats, man. I guess. Um, I guess we know what you're going to be working on for the next week. All right. So I think, uh, I think that's enough time. So why don't we go ahead and spin that wheel? Wheel of takeover. Do your thing. Oh yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And then we had, we had Charizard and he hit, Geomancer and Ugo, and then Nishak, Staltus, and Newt, all in the same temple. Wow, that's crazy! Just stacked. <laughs> Boom skillet. Uh, yeah, Geo's in the pool. I, I'll get a. I will get a pull at some point. Um, probably. I don't know. I'm not. Oh. I'm not that focused on this particular summon pool, but I think on my main I already have like 20 prism shards or something. So. Sauce, congratulations. Good to see you. We got a All member right, who won a takeover. Winner. Yeah. The sauce spouse. Yeah, is it sauce or sauce? I like sauce. <laughs> I call him sauce. Could be sauce. Yeah, he's the sauce boss. Could be Seus. Like Amadeus. That's pretty gangster. <laughs> if it was Seus. <laughs> yeah. Let it be Seus, in fact. This would please me. It would please you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we are here for. Son's pleasure. <laughs> Let, it <laughs> Let it be known. Let it be known. Speak the truth, King. Uh Good evening, Smug. Virus is in the house. Janos, good to see you, everybody. If I've missed you, uh, sorry about that. Elaine, good to see you. Eric. Anthony. Apocalypto. Joey, good to see everybody. Foss has ruined a little bit of the mystery. And said it's short for sausage. <laughs> there you go. You know what? I still like it. CT two thousand three D boy. Good to see you. Yeah. Well, that me makes it sauce. Cedric. Ty. All right. Got a lot of a lot of familiar names in the house. A few new ones. I like I like sausage personally. That's we were talking about pizza. I I like sausage on my pizza. That that should all right. Let's move on. Let's do. We're moving on from tacos. Tacos have won the day. They've come back and uh, taken back the day from pizza. Soft tacos are the bomb, thirty eight percent. But now, now since I'm talking about pizza and we're talking about sausage, I want to I want to do another poll. Um, What the heck? Yep, you're in sauce. Just make sure you uh, DM them.
All right, let's see what kind of pizza people like. Unfortunately, I can only do four options, and they're like 50 pizza toppings. I mean, personally, I've got a lot of favorites. I like sausage and mushrooms. That's my combo. Yeah, so about that whole thing, how do we become friends again? <laughs> What's wrong with sausage and mushrooms? Mushrooms? First of all, mu- mushrooms are God. fantastic. Mushrooms, mushrooms are like a superfood, and they taste wonderful. They're like essential. Mushrooms umami. are the devil's lettuce. Okay. No, just because <clears throat> you like your boxes in boxes and mushrooms are, aren't in your boxes doesn't make them bad. Look, mushrooms aren't in boxes because they're fungal grossness. <laughs> What's wrong with fungi? I'm a fungi. Uh... <laughs> hey, I like that one. <laughs> Hey, do that one again. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) This pleases me. Uh, I'm glad. (laughs) I'm glad you enjoyed that. Uh, No, it's just the texture thing, man. Mushrooms have awful texture. Unless I just haven't found mushrooms I like. Well, I think I think a lot of people do have kind of a texture objection, but that can you know. In a lot of cases, that can be a matter of preparation, you know. Mm. I think it's a mental block. I think when people are kids, they try mushrooms and they're like, oh, I don't like mushrooms. And then they never want to try mushrooms again, you know, and they're like, oh, that's they're too weird. I don't like them. Um, But like, you'd be surprised at how how many things you probably like, how many recipes you probably like have mushrooms in them and you don't even know. Yeah, I've started to realize that. If I if I can't immediately detect the texture of mushrooms, I'm not as opposed to them. Um, yeah, so as you can just DM me. That's all you got to do. Chat's going to remain a little off. Black truffle pizza is exquisite. That does sound good, Cedric. Yum, stums. I like mushrooms, but don't like onions. I like them together. Man, like mushroom and onion soup, like, oh, man, so good. Dark said, son, what? That's like saying pineapple is good on pizza. I mean, I, I didn't say pineapple is good on pizza, nor am I sure what you're referencing. Is pineapple good on pizza? Why do people hate on pineapple on pizza? I've never, I don't think I've ever had it. So, I mean, it started with sort of the Hawaiian thing, which was um, ham and pineapple, I believe, was sort of like a Hawaiian pizza, which, of course, isn't Hawaiian. It's just what well, the yeah, people I mean, who just... started like it. It's a, it was. um, It was Pizza Hut, I think. I think Pizza Hut started the Hawaiian pizza thing. And it was just like. Oh, well, that's why it's the abomination. That makes sense. Yeah. But here's the thing. When you when you bake pineapples. They get all kind of caramelized and gooey and awesome, um, yeah, but it's just a ma- it's just a matter of whether you like one if you like pineapples and two if you like sweet with your pizza, like if you want it because they're very sweet. Some people don't like sweet with their pizza. Mm. We'll make it a dessert pizza. Dessert, dessert pizza. I will say there's a. Um, there's a pizza that we do with um it's it actually uses uh a couple of different cheeses but it uses sharp cheddar and um sweet onion and it's a really unusual flavor and it's so good so crazy um uh, let me see what that <clears throat> I got the info. I'm just I'm just slow. Okay. You don't have to tell us again, brother. Okay. We accept I'm you for who guy. you are. <laughs> <laughs> it, it cracks me up. <laughs> you like that so much. It's such an old joke. <laughs> 
Oh, that man. Was... That was such a dad, like an old dad joke. I love dad jokes, man. That was that was great. Ah, <laughs> uh, fun guy. Ah. <laughs> uh. uh. All right, sauce three six five seven. All right, let's check it out. We are level ninety eight account. We're working on Scion here. So Scion is he's a ways in, isn't he? He's like the fourth login champion or something. So maybe like a year and a half. Working closer to, closer to two years, somewhere around there. Go ahead and look at the roster. <clears throat> Ooh, look at this. Sigfrund, the Nephilim. That's always fun. That is fun. All right, so looking at... Ooh, we got a Georgian. Siffy and Rotos. You got your Elva, Artak, Lazar, Wukong. You do have a Nishak, which is very nice. You have a Sissia. Razzlevarg, Mishinaki, Jintoro. You've got some good champions here. You got, you got a lot of good champions. You also got a Hefrak, so you're doing just fine in Arena, I bet, huh? You got a Nekmothar. You got a Lissandra. Yeah, you're doing, you're doing fine in Arena. Look at this. Siffy and Rotos with a Kandrafon, a Georgid, a Sigfrund, A Supreme Elhane, a Hefrak, who am I missing? Countess, Wukong. Man, you'd like a Duchess, wouldn't you? But yeah, you're doing, and a Lissandra. I mean, yeah, you're doing just fine. You got your Arbiter. February made a year. I think you have to be past a year. So is he the second login champion then? Did you just get Cleopteryx? Let's see, actually. You've got your Cleopteryx. And then you have no Scion Fragments. So these will be your first Scion Fragments. Is he the second champion? So it takes 120 days, so 390 days, huh? Yeah, so 390, 398 days. Gotcha. But just over a year. <laughs> Cole is definitely fun. Thank you. New York or Chicago pizza? New York, baby. All the way. I visited Chicago for the first time a few years ago with my wife, and we had Chicago pizza. And I will say it's this. It's, it's good. Chicago-style pizza is good. But there's nothing like New York-style pizza. Actually, there's better pizza in New England than there is. <laughs> People won't like, like me saying that. But there's amazing pizza in New England. All right. Uh, so what are we shooting for, Sauce? What are we trying to do here? I've been to Philly several times, Joey. I do love myself a good Philly cheesesteak. Um, but yeah. I mean, there's good food everywhere. As long as you're looking for it. As long as you care, you can find good food pretty much everywhere. But I will say that there's a real there's a lot of really good food in New England. There's a lot of really good food in New England. You want some sand devil help? Okay. Let's take a look. What's going on with sand devil? Yeah, we've got good seafood, man. 
You like lobsters? Really good lobsters here. Why, why am I looking at dragon? Pando. Stage 14. What have you got going? All right. All right, you've got a God Seeker in Eerie with a three star blessing. Is she running in something? Is is there a reason you're not using her here? Do you have her speed tuned for something? Let me um So people can see better. Yeah, there's good seafood here, but there's a lot of good stuff. Crazy, crazily enough, we have pretty good barbecue, and we have pretty good, uh, like Mexican, like Tex-Mex, in New England as well. Plus, just a lot of good, like Mediterranean style food, Italian style food. Um, really good burgers. Like burgers are like a big thing in New England. And great pizza. Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't really expect. Oh, also really good Indian and Thai food. <laughs> we have great Indian and Thai. Food. Like there, it's a big melting pot in New England. You know, so there, like if you want, it's not like, it's not like it's regional. I'm not saying it's re I'm not saying it's New England food. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in New England, there's such a mix of cultures. That there's so many like there's all sorts of fusion restaurants, you know, so if you like Asian, you know, they do, I mean, they do all sorts of stuff. There's um, what's that like molecular gastronomy or whatever they they do. There's all sorts of, you know, funky high end stuff here too. you know, go to <clears throat> granted New York's technically not New England, but between New York and Boston. And that's not even accounting for like. The cool stuff in like Portland or, you know, up in New Hampshire or, but yeah, I mean, if you want to go along the coastline, crazy good seafood. I like, I like Chinese. Food. Yeah, I do. I like all, there's, there really aren't cuisines I don't like. I've gotten to the point in my life where I've tried so many things where I'm like, everything, everything's good. And I'm always willing to try new stuff. So. She's in Iron Twins, but doesn't need to be. I have a spare that can replace her. That team was for speedrunning stage 10. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I see that you have two here. If you'd want, you like, let's look at, let's look at whose book. Okay, so. All right, so you have this one that's fully booked. Now there is there is a way to not fully book a champion and have like not fully book your god seeker and have that work out. I'm still working out that formula. I'm I'm actually kind of intending to do a video on that in the next few months. Um hopefully if I can get back around to it if I have find the time. Um but since this one's got the three star miracle blessing, this is more likely to succeed and she's fully booked. So if you don't mind, I'll I'll take this one and we can maybe do a rebuild here. Um, I think today's an artifact enhancement, right? We have artifact enhancement again up today? Or is it? It's tomorrow. Yeah, too bad. But you've got silver. I'll, I, I'll try not to burn too much silver. But if we do that, then I think we'll, we'll get you into a good place. Now, here's the thing about this. It's okay for turn, like, turn attack tournaments, but it's not great. Like, that's just not the way it is. Unfortunately, I don't know a better... Like, I don't know a better build. I'm not that much of an expert that I know, you know, I'm a free-to-play player. So it's like, as soon as I heard there was a God Seeker Neary duo, duo, I'm like, yeah, I'm building. Them. So if you're cool with me building a duo for you, I think we can find one. Um, you have, you know, you have some champions. Obviously, you have Drang right here, and he's he's the main duo, right? That's the one that most people pair with God Seeker. 
in order to get there, we might need a second champion who's a different affinity because sometimes Drang is a little bit tricky to make work on um, magic affinity. Um, but if you're cool with that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's see her masteries. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to build this. I'm going to try to build this. But you need full masteries on her to really work. And what I would suggest is redoing these masteries for defense and support. The offense tree isn't going to speed it up significantly. It'll speed it up a little bit. Um, but it's just going to make it harder to get the stats that you need. Now, I'll take a look at your gear. Maybe if your gear is so overpowered, you can just try for offense and defense and see if you can make it without the support tree. Um, you may be able to do that. Um, I mean, this one's already in the support and defense. So this actually, this one's in the support and defense tree. But it's only the one star mirror called Heal, so. Mm. Let's just try this for now. You can always decide on the rebuilds later. I'll get you going. I'll get you going. We'll do this. You can always swap the gear that we put on this Godseeker Neri onto the other one if you want to keep running them in those masteries. And if, if it, you know, like... You'll probably cap out. You might not get all the way to 25. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't quite have it set up the right way. But that's okay. Like, we'll, we'll get it going. Hopefully, we'll make some progress. Um, now, I do want to look at your other champions to see who might be available. I even have a God, third Godseeker Neary down here. So, you got some flexibility there. You could always mess around with some better builds later on. Let's see what's in your vault. All right, so there are some interesting options. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of a search here. We're going to look for HP burn champions because I think that's going to be the easiest. All right, so I think, I think that based on where we are today, we're better off going with Drang. But if you can do, if you can get your books right on a second God Seeker so that you can do the... We might even be able to do it. Now, now I'm... Now I'm all caught up in it. Um, so, so basically there's... <laughs> all right, this is kind of complicated. There's several different ways to run the Godseeker Neri duo. One is where the, the DPS dies, and one is where the DPS lives all the way 
until Godseeker dies and then dies with Godseeker, right? So they both die together. Godseeker passives, like passive revives herself and then active revives the, the damage dealer. And then the damage dealer nukes the boss and then the boss um, kills the DPS. And then, I'm sorry. I, I think I've already confused it. So the one where the, <laughs> the one where the DPS lives the DBS dies the same time as Godseeker and then lives through the whole cycle and then comes back around. So Godseeker revives herself, then revives the DPS. They nuke the boss. They all live, come back around the full cycle. They both die at the same time. Godseeker revives herself and the DPS. So that's, that's the survival version. There's a, a version where the DPS dies. Now, in that, that case, what happens is Godseeker and Eerie, you know, gets killed she revives herself with her passive revives the um the dps they nuke the boss on the next hit the dps dies and stays dead for the whole cycle until godseeker dies where then she revives herself and then she revives the dps so in that particular case you get fewer animations fewer turns it tends to be faster that's the preferred method it also requires less in terms of gear Right, like Godseeker Neri still needs the really good gear, but your DPS can be built for damage because you want them to die. You don't want them to be, you know, survivable. Um, and so as a result, that one tends to hit harder and it tends to have fewer turns, so it goes faster. With Cupidus here, you could do that. You could do that um, particular method, um, and he is in fact the. I'm double checking. He is the same affinity. He is, in fact, the same affinity as Walking Tomb Drank. So at 25, he's going to be great. But he's got a five star blessing. So if you are willing, I mean, maybe you're not because it depends where you're using him. But if you're willing to put a brimstone on him, you get a guaranteed brimstone. And that's going to speed you up a lot faster. So basically, it's as I think it's a 60% chance. It's not a guaranteed chance. I'm sorry. It's a 60% chance of. A brimstone that can't be removed. Um, so if you go to brimstone here, you'll see 60% chance of a protected smite. So protected can't be removed. So that means that he's going to land that smite. And then typically the sand devil cleanses all the debuffs, but he won't be able to cleanse this debuff. And therefore he'll get hit by this smite 60% of the time. Um, and that would speed up your run considerably. Yeah, now Skrank is a really good option, I think. I haven't, I haven't tried it with Skrank yet, but I was looking at your Skrank, and your Skrank does have... Where is your Skrank? Why am, why am I blind? Is he, not, is he not 60 yet? I, I just saw a Skrank. Or is he in the vault? He might be in the vault. There he is. He's in the vault. So now Skrank could be a good option. Um, and he does have a six-star blessing. But the interesting thing is here, you know, what do we do with this? Do we do Crushing Rend? You know, probably not for Sand Devils, right? That doesn't... Maybe. Maybe it would be okay. We're ignoring percentages of the target's defense for every 10 levels. I don't know what levels, but, it, you know, you're going to be ignoring... I don't know, maybe 20%. How how many how high does Sand Devils I don't know what level. Let's check the dungeon. So it gets up to th yeah, 350. So you'd be ignoring 35% defense. So that could be good. Maybe that's good. Maybe we'll we'll stick with that. Um Here's the thing. Building Skrank survivable is going to be really tough, though. You can look at his base HP and his base defense. It's pretty low. Um, and I don't think... He does have...
I mean, you'd want him to fire his HP burn and then get around to his heal. And you'd want him to heal himself in that same turn so that he would repair his destroyed max HP. He actually also has a weaken, which is... Can use Sissia. He's actually got a an extra turn mechanic, which would allow her to get a double HP burn. That would be even faster. Again, that would be a champion you'd probably want to have die. You might be able to build her tanky enough to survive, but. Yeah, okay, so. Dubitus works and he's ready to go. Yeah, now the nice, the nice thing about Drang is he doesn't need any accuracy because his HP burn um, can't be resisted. So if we're building anybody else, not only do we have to make them survivable, but we have to make them accurate enough to actually land everything. And I just don't see that happening. One of the reasons, if you watch my video, one of the reasons why I chose Selenium um, is because she has an increased accuracy. I don't see, I don't see Selenia on your roster. There's one. Okay. So the reason why I picked her is because on her A3, which is her HP burn, before attacking, she places 25% increased accuracy buff on this champion. Plus, she has this built-in heal on her A1. So she really has this perfect kit, right? And she's also Void Affinity. She's also really hard to keep alive. Um, but so, you know, having sustain, having accuracy having speed and then having the HP burn and then having like just an having enough stats to make it worthwhile to build a survivable champion. That's like really tough. And I think, I think the best, I think the best champion is just, I think the best champion is walking to him drank and we'll have to find a way to get through the other. We'll just have to find a way to get through the other levels. I think. And honestly, I think his build may already be okay. He's really close. Right? I mean, so... If we just build Godseeker right, he might, he might be already enough. He might be enough. He's at 226, which is probably okay. He's still got a little bit of room to, like, get extra HP if we need it. Uh, you know, he's already at 94,000. We could probably get him to, like, 97,000 or something. His defense is a little bit low here at 2,600. Um, but we could get a little bit of defense here on the shield. I mean, I'd like him at 3k. Let's see where, what's, what is he at? He's at 2574. But for now, I think that's what we'll do. We'll, bu we'll build a God Seeker in Eerie for now. And we'll get you set up knowing that you need to get your masteries. And that you might need to, you know, make an adjustment for um, Drang going forward. But I think I think that should be that should be good. We'll do that for today, and that way we don't have to rebuild like your Skrank or your Cupidus or whatever. Uh, and you can consider that in the future. The nice thing about this is the Godseeker Neri.
build is the key component, right? The other build is less. Like you can put a lot of champions in with her. In this case, we're going to try to run her fast because one, you don't have a five star or six star blessing. So we want to run her fast. That way she gets more chances to actually regenerate the destroyed HP. And then the other reason um, we need to run her fast is because of. Yeah, because we're going to keep him alive. If you were if you were running it where the DPS died, you'd actually want to run her slow. Um, and then you'd need a six star blessing probably for this particular champion because she's fully booked. If you didn't book her, like if you have fewer books, you can actually run her faster, right? Because you need the extra turns to get back around to the cooldown. Um, but I, like I said, I still haven't figured quite figured that out. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's start working on this Godseeker. You built him for Sand Devil, great. All right, so let's go ahead and um, we, need, we need this Godseeker and Eerie in full regen gear. Um, and we need her with speed on everything. We don't need resistance for her, by the way, so just in case you were wondering, we're probably good there. This is an HP chest plate with speed. That might work. That's probably our best option. Um, that looks good. This one's already rolled. This is, how much speed is on this one? 15, and this one's 13. It's actually just a one speed difference, but it's got more HP, and we're going to need that HP. So let's take this one for now. Let's go ahead and... Hey, Annie. Good to see you. Hey, Neil. They want speed, not attack, not attack. Give me some speed. Okay. Now we're hoping for like defense percentage. Resistance is okay. Accuracy is kind of a waste. Let's see if there is um speed boost in the regen center. That's nice. That's actually a very nice. Ooh, that's even better though. Unfortunately, it's five slower, but 19% HP is big. All right. And then we're looking at Immortal. Um... Got eight. Okay, so this triple speed, we're not losing that. And then we'll go um, try this one first. Six stars. Maybe we can get a double roll into speed. That would be huge. Nope. Try this one. Wow, the crit damage, huh? I mean, what the heck? So frustrating.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, let's try ascending this. We'll see. Maybe we'll get lucky and get speed. Nope. You mind if I use dust for one try here to try to get speed in this? We don't have to. It's a five star, so you might not want to. It's okay if you don't. We can always try the six star. Okay. Try it one time. No. Uh. You gotta be kidding me. HP is okay. Get some speed down. Wow. Yeah, the piece that you have on here, I think, is the best. 17 with the 19% HP. We need to get her up to 271, I think. I think that's what we need. Now, we could do 263 with the Masteries, but we really, realistically, here need to get her... Wow. You have so much speed. Why are we slow here? I mean, we can glyph one, two, three. It feels like we shouldn't be this slow. Huh. Hey, Hammer. Hey, Syndra. Good to see you. I'm wondering if we can run slower and still make it work. Maybe we can try it, but I... Maybe with Drang it'll work. Maybe with Drang it'll work. Yeah, I mean, we can ascend stuff to get more HP. Um, and right now the defense is, you know, we've dropped the defense quite a bit. We can get some of the defense back. Um. Uh, I 
I mean, we could get a little bit of speed here. You know, obviously, you can get HP here. Defense. Are you saving for something? I mean, four speed's not a lot, but it'll it'll help. Yeah, I could look at Defiant Gear. I, it's really tricky with Godseeker, especially if she doesn't have... If she doesn't have the five-star blessing. You need her to be very fast. Uh, let's see. Struggling a little bit with with why we can't get fat. I mean, I I'm just thinking about my God Seeker. I'm running her at like two seventy three or something and she's got i think about 75 or seventy eight thousand hp and it doesn't feel like my gear is significantly better than yours so i wonder i'm just trying to figure out where those stats are coming from now obviously we have a five star gauntlet here you know so you get 10 percent extra hp out of that uh, if you go to up to a six star but that has a triple speed roll you know it's 18 plus two we yeah we can glyph we could probably glyph 20 to 25 speed if we use big lift. Um, all right. I think we have to try this. I think we just have to go and, and try this because you can always iterate, right? You can always work your way up to it. Um, This has a chance of speed. I didn't see these. These have 20 speed. What is this? That's yeah, not fast. I'm waiting for the text of speech, but Uncle Dan, thank you. Gifting five more subs. That's awesome. Got not that Karen, Darth, Das, uni, Universum, Leah, and Saris all getting memberships. Thank you so much for the gifted subs. That's very cool, Uncle Dan. I appreciate it. And uh, like we like to say around here, the horde grows. That's awesome. All right, let's... Mm. You said you're willing... Yeah, we could we could rework this one. Try this. See if we get lucky and we get triple speed. Nope. We got flat HP instead of flat HP, and we lost our flat speed. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Um, I think it was this one. Sarah's Valas became a member. There it is. Lion I became a member. Das Universum became a member.
D4RTH became a member. Not that Karen became a member. Speed here. Speed. Defense is actually not that bad. Okay. All right. I think that's where we are. Um, so we're going to... We're going to do a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to start to ascend some stuff. See if we can get defense percentage is good. That's fine. I'll leave that for now. Let's go ahead and send that up. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, let's go ahead and. All right, we're getting the defense at least. So we're up to 3,200 defense, which is close to where I'd want to be. Um, 72. So we might be a little bit low for the top floors, but I think we're actually going to be fast enough and we're going to be tanky enough to get you some more floors. And then you can, you know, you can iterate as you go. So let's go ahead. Um, are you okay with me using up your speed glyphs because you've got only a few of them? Um, if you don't want me to use the six stars or whatever, you can let me know. Um, but we need every drop of speed. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to look for triple rolls to glyph first. Let's see. Okay. So what about, what about these gloves? What were these? These were, that was a triple roll. Okay. And that's a five star. So we're going to, we're going to try to get a five star speed glyph on this. Get more speed here. Come on. There we go. Got two speed there. Uh, and then what about these? This is a double speed roll. So we're going to try. Nope. We've only got two of those. We are going to do this square. This one. Come on, eight. Seven is good. I'll take it. Let's do some defensive work. a four star here come on four two's not awful all right masteries are not done yet which means we will get some more stats potentially. Uh, 256 we're looking at. It's almost there, right? Like you only, you only really need 263 when you've got the masteries. If you go down the support tree. So you can probably get there. You might be looking for a replacement for this gauntlet at some point. Maybe if you can get a six star with a double roll. You know, you might even be able to get, like, more speed out of that. Um, so this is not bad. Let's go ahead and equip this. All right. And we're going to try this out. Remember, we don't have the full masteries. We're a little bit shy on speed to go all the way up. But this might be enough. This might be enough to get us at least some progress. Um, okay, so we're on 15. 15 should be fine. We do need to set up a team, though. We do need to set up a team because you need the... Uh... Yeah. Can I... What can I... What can I change?
I can just change the Sand Devils one. I can change the Cubitus with Rares. Okay. All right, so we need to. Um, we're probably going to manual this, but I'm going to show you the setup for what you want for the whole thing. Um, so for Drang, all you want to make sure that you do is prioritize the A1. Um, first choice. If you want, because at some point you're going to be going slower than the boss, you could always like open with, you know, this. As far as Godseeker Aniri is concerned, um, I think you, your default is fine. I think the default is fine. That's really, I think, all we need to do. You don't need to do much. So let's go ahead and start this. All right, so we're going faster than the boss right now, but as you go up, you're going to be going slower than the boss. Okay, so this is where it really matters what you do. While the boss is asleep, you can actually regenerate your destroyed health on both champions. The A2... Um, let's see. Okay, so the A1 doesn't heal Godseeker and Neri. So what you want to do is you want to open with the A2. That will restore the destroyed HP on both champions. Then you want to go ahead and get the HP burn out there. All right. And now Godseeker can do her A1. And then Drang can do his A1. Now his A1 activates the HP burn. So if you get him mastery so that he extends the HP burn, that can be nice too. So you can get extra turn of that. Um, or what you can do here is if you have enough turns and enough speed, um, you can also use the heal and the heal will actually also regenerate destroyed hp potentially so but here we're just going to activate it and you can see it does a decent amount of damage and now what we're just going to do is we should just cycle around i think this might actually be auto we'll see if this is an issue Okay, so it is tricky because Drang is almost dead here. We're going to use the... Ooh, okay. Um... And she, yeah, okay, so we do have the manual. She used her A2 at the wrong time. But I think we might still get around to it because we're going to use the HP burn here. And then we're going to use this. Okay. Uh, and we can actually use the A3 here, I think. And then the A1. And with the three-star blessing, you should have enough opportunities to... I think it's a 50% it's a chance of you know regenerating destroyed HP, so that should work. No. Nope. Oh. She died and he didn't. That's actually fine, I think. That was really weird. Unfortunately, so this is the issue right now for her. She's not going fast enough to get as many ticks on her regen gear as she needs. But Drang has this extra heal, and that's pulling her back up to where she needs to be. So as long as we manual it, I think we'll be fine. We just can't... We gotta, like, balance all of the different things here. We can't let them use their, their cooldowns at the wrong time, because if they do, we, we're just gonna end up dead. Okay, so Drang still isn't dying there. Unfortunately, he did a counterattack, which we didn't want. Uh, you want to take counterattacks off your DPS, because if they counterattack while he's 
sleeping, they'll actually burn his sleep counter. Like, you know, he gets so many hits before you wake him up, kind of like so many hits to break the Fire Knight shield. But in this case, you don't want to break the Fire Knight shield. You want to keep him asleep. Um, so you, you're you going to have to, you know, if he's in re revenge accessories, you need to take those off. If he's got the, the counter attack masteries, you want to take those off. All right, so they both survived that one. It's okay if they both die there. It's okay if one of them dies there. Um, all right, so you can see between her blessing of repairing the destroyed health and the fact that that just naturally happens in this phase, we're fine. Um, I am going to actually do this right now. Make sure that she gets... We'll see if he gets to go again. Okay. So the most important thing is that they live. You don't care about the time. You don't care about the turn count right now. You just need to get up to the highest level. Remember, at 25, he is strong affinity anyway. Um, and so, you know, once you... The hardest thing is actually getting there, not being. Looks like sausage, meatball, and bacon won our, <laughs> our favorite pizza topping. Like it could be any of those, I suppose. Yeah, I don't use counterattacks on anybody for this. Um See, those counterattacks are hurting. And so now, rather than burning that HP and, like, doing more damage to the boss, I need to use the A3 to bring Godseeker Neri's health back up because we're losing, right, we're losing one extra, like, go-round from, from the, the attack counter. We're also not going fast enough. Um, we're probably going fast enough here like at whatever we are, 16 or 17, but we're not going fast enough for stage 25. But so, you know, just learning the cycle, like how this works here is, is really useful. You know, so it's good to manual as well, because then you'll actually see the fight kind of unfold. Um, and you'll have an idea of where, you know, where the weaknesses are, where it fails. Because if you just full audit it, you wouldn't necessarily know why it fails when it fails. Um, but now you can you can kind of see it and see how it's unfolding. And you're like, oh, yeah, OK, so we're going too slow or we're going too fast or we're dying, you know, at the wrong moment or whatever it is, because. So basically, if you don't know, you need to die. Well, we're not actually dying, so let's see here. Uh, let me just get around to this next turn. Okay, so now the, on the boss's next turn, you can see the cooldown, Feasting Swarm, and Dune Tempest are both at one. Feasting Swarm will always be used first. Okay? Now, the reason that this is important is that it ignores 100% of the target's defense. So this will wreck your target usually Godseeker, right? It'll kill Godseeker. If both champions die to Feasting Swarm, then the boss goes to sleep after Feasting Swarm, right? After attacking places a sleep debuff. So at that point, Godseeker revives herself and then she can revive her DPS. And then they can do all the things that they need to do to regen their max HP back and do damage to the boss. That's where all of the damage comes in. And that's where most of the regeneration comes in. When the boss wakes up, he uses Dune Tempest next. You need to survive Dune Tempest. If you're using the strategy where the DPS dies, the DPS needs to die to Dune Tempest. You don't want them to survive that. They need to die right away. Okay. And the reason you need them to die right away is because her passive will come back. 
in four turns or what, however many turns. So if it comes back and then the DPS dies, then the DPS is going to be revived then, and then she won't have it available for the next cycle of Feasting Swarm, where she's going to die. Okay? So, she can't waste her passive on the DPS. If she ever uses her passive on the DPS and then dies, she won't have her passive to revive herself. Now, right now, it feels like she's surviving Feasting Swarm, but you'll get to a point where that doesn't happen. Um, so that's sort of how that works. And again, you see that by manualing the fight. So we're going to get here. So that would normally be the one that kills you. Feasting Swarm would normally wipe you both out. And when that happens, the passive revive kicks in and God Seeker brings herself back. She brings the DPS back, resets the DPS's skills. And now you're in this exact state here, but you are regening your HP and doing your damage. So. Again, here, this is a natural HP restoration, right, when any heal happens. So we're in really good shape there. Now we put our HP burn down. Great. Ticks once. We could activate it to tick a second time, which we can do right now. You see it activates a second time. Now we're going to get the Dune Tempest, which normally we would want to have that destroy our DPS. But in this case, our DPS is going to live, and that's fine. And now we just keep going. Is Sulfurian a viable DPS for Sand Devil? Um, potentially, yes. Any HP burner is pretty good. Any max HP is pretty good. It helps to not have to have accuracy. Like That's why Drang is so good. He doesn't need accuracy, because then you don't have to worry about extra stats. And it's better to have your DPS die if you can manage it. If you can manage that build instead of this one, that's the better, that's the better setup. Um. So yeah, I mean, if you have an HP burner who also has an activation, um, like Drang does, right, then then you can get two ticks of the HP burn or three ticks of the HP burn, potentially, as opposed to just one. Okay, so this would be where the death happens, but we're surviving. Which is actually kind of problematic because we would sort of prefer to die and come back. But that rotation is working just fine. We should kill it on the next rotation. Hey, Sebastian. Good to see you. Okay, so she, she's going to revive herself. Going to do the HP burn. This threw us off a lot. I think I'm just going to kill it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so right now, he's tankier than she is, which is a problem. We need her to be tankier generally, or at least equally tanky. Um, let's go look at the champions for just a sec. His mastery. Yeah, so he's got these two masteries, right? Retribution and deterrence. Um, this one shouldn't proc here, but this one will. Because... It's a 50% chance to counterattack when this champion loses 25% of their max HP, and they will lose 25% of their max HP every time on Dune Tempest or Feasting Swarm. Feasting Swarm is the one that we're worried about. Um, you can't increase turn meter. You can't do that. 
Um, yeah, you can't do that. So that leaves <laughs> this. It's not great, you know? Um, Yeah, I mean, you could just leave them, leave them undone. Uh, I'm not sure what masteries I actually run, to be honest. I might run support. I think I run offense support. Because all of the, you know, the max HP and all of the, like, increases the value of heals and shields and all that stuff, that increases your regen. Um... And then, I yes, I definitely run support because I also run Master Hexer to extend the duration of the HP burn, and I run Lore of Steel to get myself like more HP uh, from my Immortal set and stuff like that. Um, and I'm pretty sure that you can't run... Yeah, I probably do... I don't know what I'd do here. You can run Rapid Response because he doesn't buff, or you could run Swarm Smiter, but he doesn't need accuracy. So there is a little bit of a throwaway there, but you don't, I guess it, you could run Cycle of Magic. I guess you could. I don't see any problem with running Cycle of Magic. Um, so you could do like Steadfast into Lay on Hands, into Healing Savior, into Cycle of Magic and Lore of Steel, and that'll get you to the Master Hexer, and you can run Lasting, uh, not, you don't need Lasting Gift. So yeah. Probably run your second your second one over here, maybe. The nice the nice thing for this really is just this one. Delay death and also the AoE reduction. Like these are good. Right. But I don't think you need them. I think you're gonna get as much regen from the other from the other tree. And it'll give you potentially, you know, more. You won't have the counterattacks, it won't mess with you, and it'll give you more from the um the debuff extension and the lore of steel. Lore of steel, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but especially if you're running defiant, right? You're getting 1.5% additional defense, and then I guess not if you're running defiant. I was gonna say immortal. Immortal gives you the 15% of the 15% HP that you get. But he's really, he's taking 15% less damage from those enemy AoEs, which is what's making him so tanky, which is great. And again, you could get more HP and more defense here easily enough. Yeah, Selena Feline. So there is a, there is a comp. It's actually different for every comp, I think. Think of it this way. So we'll go back in. We'll do the next, we'll do the next one. All right, so think of it this way. If If the DPS dies and stays dead, then it doesn't matter what your passive cooldown is as long as it's fast enough based on the speed that you're going. So it has to come back up by the time Godseeker and Eerie dies, which she's going to die to this Feasting Swarm, right? So that has to happen. Now, remember that even though this looks like it's on a four-turn cooldown, it's not really because the boss goes to sleep. So, like, your turns are faster than his turns, I guess is what, is what I'm saying. Um, so what you want to do is try to land... Um, books into the passive but avoid the active revive because what will happen is um, you don't want to run as fast you don't want to run as fast no do you want to run as fast I'm sorry you want to run fast I guess it depends because you can run slow or run fast but if you run slow 
then you you need more books. If you if you run fast, then you don't want the books because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want to have Godseeker and Eerie revive your DPS except during this moment right now, the stage where we're currently in. So the the boss just used Feasting Swarm and killed us. This is where we want to revive the DPS. We don't want to revive at any other point. So depending on how many turns you take to get back to this cycle, that's the number of cooldowns you want on the active revive. So we just, we just, let's say we just revive, right? So now we can count Godseeker's turn. Well, never mind. Let me try that again. I got messed up maybe because I was talking. I don't know. All right, so here's the hit. We revive. Okay. It's that counterattack. That counterattack wrecked us. That was really unfortunate. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And then we, and we're not going to get any damage on this boss here. Really. Okay, so this is the first turn. Is this Godseeker's first turn? Or it's her second turn. So this is turn two. Turn three. Turn four. And then dead. So you would want this on a five turn cooldown because this would be her fifth turn. Right, and then she would revive. I think it's got to be on a five-turn cooldown. So if you book it all the way down, it goes down to a four-turn cooldown. So you would want to miss at least one book on the boss. Um, or I'm sorry, on Godseeker Neri's active revive. I think that's how it, how you want to do it. Hey, Freaky, how you doing? All right, but this is really these counterattacks now are killing us. Because we're not getting we're not getting enough turns there to to regen our health. We're actually activating the boss way, way early. It's probably gonna be fine. It looks like we're getting around to the nuke. We'll both die this time. So this is what should happen, right? And so this is where we use the, the active revive. Now Dran goes. And you can see we haven't, the boss isn't awake yet. So now we can use our, our heal. We regen some of the, now we can use that. And that should be good. So depending at the speed you run, You'll get different numbers of turns and you'll get different, you'll get, even if you get the same number of turns, you may get the turns in different sequence. Um, so like, even if you're getting five turns per cycle, you may get them before or after the little claw attacks, which could make a difference. Um, yeah. Another thing is you want to make sure that you're regening this destroyed HP because the boss actually heals himself based on the percentage of destroyed HP you have on your team. All right, so this is the active revive. Then we get the HP burn. Go for the heal. And we need the big heal. And that, that works okay. We're not getting... We're not getting what we were getting before in terms of the damage. Because we're now running a little bit... Like, the boss is running a little bit faster and is actually getting back to the awakened state a little bit quicker than before and as a result we're getting one less attack in so we're getting one less heal so drang should be dying from this point on but what you're going to see is this dune tempest heals the boss all right so Is 
See, the boss gets like a full turn there, so we're only going to get one cycle here. Now watch where the boss's HP is. That actually worked out for us. For some reason, that speed was different than normal. All right. So Drang should die. Both died. That's fine. That's the way it's supposed to work, where both die. All right. So now what's going to happen is on this next boss's turn, there's going to be a heal. So you can actually watch where the HP is. It's like on the edge of this feasting swarm icon, right? Actually went down. Okay, so was there an HP burn up? I didn't I didn't see. We're doing okay on the Yeah, it's because there's a, it's because there's another HP burn there. But there should be a, there. There was a little heal. It was pretty small, but there was a heal. So as long as you keep the percentage of destroyed HP sort of under control, then the heals aren't too big. But if you know if you're running with like. 60 or 70% max HP destroyed on both champions, then the heals start to get pretty big, and it can really slow down the run. Hey, Greg. Good to see you. Thank you. I hope your Tuesday's going well. The next free regearing should be coming soon. Maybe this weekend? I think it's this weekend. I'm going to run this on auto and see how it works. We might, it looks like the speeds might have normalized. I revive, revive, HP burn. Boom. Yeah, I think we've reached the full auto stage. I think now we're not going too fast. Because before, and... Well, actually, it's not the issue of going too fast. It's the issue that Drang wasn't dying before, but now he is. And as long as he dies at the right moment, this should be fine. Yeah, this is full auto. Yeah, we do want to use the A3 after the A2, but... I think we're okay because you can also use the A3 like after the boss is awake and you're still going to get the heal. And it looks like Godseeker is doing enough with the um, the HP repair on herself that it's good. Smash that like button. Yeah, that'd be great. You hit the like button on the stream.
Yeah, Sauce, we can change the masteries. I'm I'm not super worried about it right now because if he's dying, then he doesn't do the counterattack. Um so that's fine. As long as he always dies, we don't have to worry about the counterattack masteries. And then you can keep the counterattack masteries if you use them in other content and want those counterattacks. But right now, this is looking pretty good. Hey, MZ, good to see you. <clears throat> I like this duo. I like the God Seeker and Eerie duos. There's so there's so much flexibility here with what champions you can bring in. I do think Drang is an absolutely great pairing because of the um, the lack of accuracy, like the requirement for accuracy. You know? um, that really makes it easier. I don't know how many irresistible HP burns there are. You know, one thing to remember is when you get when you get to five stars, if you put whoever your DPS is in Brimstone, if it's a legendary, then you can get that Brimstone that can't be removed, the smite buff that can't be removed, and that will just speed up the whole run quite a bit. Okay, so let's see if we can run it for full auto from the start right now. Let's see if it works. Ignatius has one. He missed the HP burn that time. Got three percented. See, so what makes this kind of friendly, I, I would say kind of friendly, is that Drang is just survivable. He's just very survivable. He's got, you know, the, uh, the irresistible HP burns. So you're really in a situation where it's like you can just get your right speed and stack your HP in defense and you should be fine. You have a five star Blizzard. Yeah, you could solo the boss with that. So basically what he does, he has like a passive, just like um, Godseeker and Eerie, right? Um, where he basically revives on death. And then instead of using an HP burn, you're just using the smite at that point, right? You've got the five star smite that can't be cleansed. And so every time it lands, it just is going to proc. Um, and you'll get damage there. And so that's a very nice build. It's really, it's really efficient. It's really clean. You only need one champion. The downside, of course, being you need the five-star soul. I wasn't able to get that five-star soul. I have the four-star soul. So maybe if the five-star soul pops up in the shop someday, I'll get it. And then I can run that. But you can run Smite here, right? Like it doesn't have to be Lazar. It could be any, any legendary that you're running in here could bring in that that five star uh, brimstone or six star brimstone. And um, I mean, obviously the six star brimstone is going to be even better, right? Because then you land it a hundred percent of the time. Godseeker needs to be using the A2 in that. It might just be a, a timing issue because I think that's on a three turn cooldown. So it just might not be up every time. Yeah. So there she's using it, but then when she doesn't have it, she doesn't use it. Gotcha. That's what's happening. 
So as you can see, this isn't fast. And unfortunately, uh, Drang is weak affinity here. And so he's going to miss more HP burns. Uh, he's also going to take more damage. And the more damage means more heals for the boss. So this could run, you know, like eight minutes. Um, something like that, maybe nine even. Typically, when Drang is strong affinity at stage 25, my runs last five and a half minutes. It's pretty consistently like between 515, I want to say, and 530 or 535. So that's basically where it lives. Um, you know, if you get a few more War Master procs or if you, you know, get a few more 3%, you know, resistances, then it's going to it's gonna fluctuate. Um, but for the most part, it's, you know, between five and five and a half minutes every time, really consistently, 100% chance. Hey, Maritime, good to see you. You bought the five star after earning the four star. Nice. Yeah, so any weak hit is, you know, an opportunity to miss the HP burn. And additionally, you take 30% extra damage, so you just the destroy max HP becomes a problem um, and can actually break the run as well. You can see no HP burn there. Yeah, so I mean, the best way to get past the weak affinities is to try manualing. Um, but I actually tried that with Drang, and I still could. I couldn't. I couldn't manual the weak affinity. I needed. I needed Selenia to actually get through, and so I used her um, from stages sixteen to twenty-four. Like I kept throwing him in to try him, you know, to see if it would work and stuff like that, because I was experimenting, you know, for content. Uh, but she actually did a much better job on the way up than he did um, because she never weak hits. And she has, um, you know, sustain on her A1, uh, which was really nice. Her chance of landing the HP burn is like 87.5% because it's three hits. Three hits at 50% each, I think. Um, so she doesn't land every HP burn. But she was landing, you know, she lands most of them. I also had her in Miracle Heal, so when she healed herself, she would repair her own max HP, uh, which made it a lot easier. So basically, she was never, she was never a threat of dying, and the boss never really healed himself. So yeah, we're not getting the HP burn very much here. You can see how often we're missing. I mean, not not on that one because the boss wasn't asleep, but. All right, we landed one there. That's good. Now, if Drang dies at the wrong time, that's a problem. We got to watch that. If, he, if he's getting close, we're going to have to maybe manual to try to switch things around a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's taken much much longer when he's weak affinity this is why having that void affinity champion on the way up can be really helpful i'm actually thinking another really good champion to try here that's a little bit cheaper you know is frenzy um frenzy's void affinity an epic so not as expensive as a legendary uh has the hp burn and also is relatively tanky not a huge hp pool but much tankier on defense uh, than say Selenia is, so it's going to be a lot easier to keep alive than Selenia, and you could potentially just march her up, march Frenzy up, all the way up, you know, to stage twenty five, and then swap to Drang at twenty five, or keep Frenzy if you don't have Drang. Take a look. Let me take a look at Frenzy while while we're waiting for this.
Yeah, so if we look at Frenzy's kit. I'm just going to let this run in the background. Let's go look at Frenzy's kit. Yeah, I mean, you could literally use, you could use any le legendary that you had six stars on. You could even use a support legendary that you had six stars on if you put them in Brimstone. Right? Um, when I say six star blessing, right? Because it's a 100% chance. If you have a five star or a six star blessing on any legendary, you can put them in Brimstone, have them be your duo. The Brimstone does the damage. So you don't need the HP burn. You don't need to be a max hitter. You just, like, literally anybody, anybody at all who's a legendary with five stars could be your brimstone carrier, basically. That's all they're doing. They're just transporting the buff into the fight. Um, or the debuff, rather. They're transporting the debuff into the fight. So you can really do it that way. And that's not a bad way to do it. Um, so if you have a blessing, let's say you have a blessing on a champion that you don't use that much, and you're like, what am I ever going to use this champion for? Throw him here, right? By the way, they don't need gear. <laughs> like, if you have it set up with Godseeker Neri where the DPS dies, you literally don't even need gear. Like, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, you just need to make sure that, you know, re you repair the max HP so that it doesn't take so long, so that the boss doesn't keep getting healed. If we take a look at Frenzy, I actually really like Frenzy uh, for this particular fight. So you can see, compared to Selenia, right? Selenia has something like 13,000 HP. She has 16,680, so it's a bit higher, so you're going to get more regen. Selenia has like 900 defense, and Frenzy has 1443. So the speed, some accuracy there. This is, go this is a much better option than Selenia. This is a much better option than Selenia for a couple of reasons. Uh, so first is the stats, right? Um, but here, the other thing is you have 100% HP burn. So each... It is a three hitter, just like Selenia's, but each hit has 100% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for two turns. Fills this champion's turn meter by 10% for each HP burn debuff placed by the skill. So you get a 10% speed or, or turn meter fill. That shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be a problem. And then has the A1 like Drang. It's not a double hitter. It's a single hitter, but has a 50% chance of instantly activating the HP burn debuff on the target. So not 100% chance, but you could actually activate that burn. So if you have the debuff extension for master hexer you can get three hp burns out and and then you can get all three values because you can activate one of them at least 50 percent of the time um so this should be a champion that is easier to build than selenia and does damage more quickly than selenia so i actually think this is a slightly better champion now the one downside or i'd say the two the two advantages selenia has over frenzy was one Selenia brings her own increased accuracy buff, so she doesn't need as much accuracy. Uh, so some of that stat benefit that you're getting here from Frenzy being an epic is mitigated by that accuracy buff. Just a little bit. And then I think the other thing is that Frenzy doesn't have any built-in regeneration, whereas Selenia does. Now, as you can see with Drang, that's fine. You don't necessarily need to have built-in sustain on your DPS. Right, especially if you just want your DPS to die, then you don't really care about frenzy living. It, I mean, in that particular case, then the stats don't matter. If you want frenzy to live, though, she'll be easier to live. But you just need to make sure you're getting all the healing from your God Seeker and Eerie. So you know, there's some trade offs. There's some trade offs. But I think all in all, she's a better champion for the survival based method. So if you want your DPS to survive all the way through, this is going to be a more survivable DPS who could potentially even speed you up a little bit because she's got that HP burn activation. You know, and she's not going to miss 12.5% of the time on her HP burn. She's still Void Affinity. So I think this is, this is a really good champion to consider. I'm actually building one out for that purpose. We'll see. All right, so now that we got, you can see 520 turns, 11 and a half minutes. My guess is the next one's going to be fine, too. Like, you know, you can keep pushing this. You're up to stage 18. You will run out, out of speed at a point. You're not running fast enough yet. Um, sauce. So, you know, once you start getting to 21, 22, you might be running too slow. And even if you manual it, it's not going to work. But what I would say is you can probably auto the next few. I would say up to stage 20. T stage 20 and stage 22 are going to be tricky for you. 
because Drang is, again, weak affinity. Um, as far as your champions are concerned, for Drang, let's look at Drang. Drang may be fine, because, again, we don't care if he dies. If he dies, you can manual, right? But if he dies, you can't full auto once you get to 25. So at 25, he'll, he needs to stay alive. But you can always manual on the weak affinities, and if he dies, it's fine. Just don't use the revive until the right moment. But Godseeker Aniri cannot die. She, can, she can't die except to the uh, Feasting Swarm. That's the only time she can die. And right now, I think she's close. I think she's close to tanky enough. I think she might actually be okay. She might be okay if you could get, you know... A little bit more HP on her. Um, you know, we didn't glyph this like in terms of defense or HP. You could get a little bit more there. So again, you know, if you could get her to let's say 75, 76,000 HP and maybe like 3,400 defense, I think that's right around where mine is. I think mine's around like three and a half thousand, like 75 to 78,000 HP, I think. I think. And I've improved her. So she wasn't there when I first made this full auto. The speed here is 260. If you switch her masteries, so you put her in the support tree, defense and support, and you go up and get this mastery here, spirit haze. This is going to give you eight additional speed because Drang dies. And it doesn't matter if he's alive or dead. If he, Once he dies the first time, this gets applied and it stays there. Okay, it just stays there forever. So you're going to get eight extra speed. So all you need to do is get her from 250, whatever she's at. She's at 256, but she's actually running at 260. You only need three more speed. So you could literally, like if you can get this over to speed, you're fine. If you get a six star boot, that's going to be enough. If you get a couple more, you know, speed points out of a glyph, so if you can get this three to like a plus five, you know, you could get an area bonus. One more area bonus is going to get you two more speed there. So you basically need three speed. That's all you need. If you can get her three more speed and she survives, she has enough stats to survive the whole time except for the Feasting Swarm, then this is going to work. You're really close. It might, in fact, it might be that just the mastery would be enough, but I think you need to be over 270. I think you need to be 271. And right now, you, you know, you'd be running at 268, I think. So, um, yeah, and then again, you know, consider if there's somebody you want to use when Drang is weak affinity. If there's somebody else that you can use, um... And when you do get all the way here, you know, one of the other things that we, we were talking about with the, um, the smite, you know, the, the brimstone is, is Cupidus, right? So if you can get Cupidus to a build where he works, but again, right now, because of the way your God, this Godseeker Neri is built, you're going with the survival method and Drang is easily the most survivable of the champions that you have for this role. Um, if you can build one of your other Godseekers with that cooldown like without the book in the cooldown for the active revive, then you could potentially run her a little bit slower and let your DPS die. And then you could run Cupidus and it wouldn't matter. Like he just needs the accuracy. It's okay if he dies, he doesn't need to survive. That could be a lot faster because between the fact that he's dying and not animating so many times and the smite that's protected, those two things could speed you. Like this is going to be a five and a half minute run. Running it that way might take two and a half or three minutes. Like, it might be that much faster. So you could potentially cut the, the amount of time in half in terms of farming. All right. So any questions, Sauce? You feel like we, we got you on the right path, at least? I know we didn't take you all the way home, but, you know, you need a little bit more gear. Or a few more glyphs, maybe. Um, but you're close. You're really close. In fact, you might you might be there, honestly, with just a change of mastery. Okay. Don't hesitate to reach out and let me know, you know, how things are going. If you have another question, we'll try to get you sorted. Um, but again, the, you're going, 
you're going to get stuck on those magic affinity bosses because Drang is going to be weak affinity there. And so you're, you're going to have to manual those fights uh, to get through if Drang can even do it. And if he can't do it, you may need to consider bringing somebody else in who is, say, force affinity. Do you have anybody who's good force affinity that you could bring in to get that job done? Um. Yeah, I mean, you could try. You could try Sissia. You could manual it with Sissia. You could manual it with Nishak, and both would work. Um, I think both would work. Sissia might be be easier, even because like she'll just die. You know, she'll just die, and then you don't have to worry about it. You just don't, you manual so you don't revive her. So as long as your Godseeker Aniri is tanky enough. Sissia will work in those magic affinity bosses just fine. Make sure she's got the accuracy she needs. And she's great because she's going to do the HP burn. And then she's also going to activate it. And the great thing about her is hers is naturally a three turn HP burn. Right? Plus you have a brimstone here. Well, the brimstone's probably going to get wiped out. But, um, but yeah, it's naturally a three turn. So you're going to get extra value for her. So you're going to get the, the two turns of HP burns. Plus you're going to get the activation. So she could be a lot faster and she's going to be strong affinity. So she's, the, she's probably the perfect champion for that. Um, so when rather than try to force it with Drang when he's weak affinity, just swap in Sissia and manual it and you should be fine. Yeah. All right. So that is that. I'm excited when we, we, you know, even if we don't get all the way there, and one of the things is, like, it's just a time limit. Like, I think we could get all the way there. If this were, like, a four-hour takeover, we could get all the way there. But I'm always excited to, like, get somebody a solution, get them on a path, and then have them go the rest of the way. Because one of the things about, just this is just my personal philosophy. I'm not saying this is what players want all the time. But I would prefer to, to model a solution and then let the player take that solution home so that they can understand that solution better. Because then they can tweak it. Then they can modify it. Then they know what happens when they change their gear. If I just solve a problem for you and I'm like, here, it's solved. It's like, if you don't know how that solution works, then if it ever changes for any reason, oh, you put an area bonus in, you forgot and you changed the speed. Like, you may not even know how to tweak it to get it to work again. Um, and so... I actually really like this. It's like, yeah, we, we clearly have a solution. And now it's just a matter of you going out, learning it, modifying it, you know, making sure it's 100% and it's what you want. And again, that also means that I don't like mess up your roster or your gear because you get to make all those decisions. Um, and you're not just doing this one thing that we did in the takeover. You're doing everything. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks to Sauce. Uh, Son, are you there? Are you muted? He is in a different room. All right, so I'm going to log out of this. Give it a minute, because we're going to need him to... Reset the wheel. Hello, brother. There you go. Can you reset our wheel, please? Is it that time already? I was tra traversing through the nether realm of Sand Devil. I was being transported. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh. <laughs> you sassing me? Is that what you're doing? Hell yeah, brother. All right, everybody, the wheel has been reset. All right, so go ahead and react to the wheel again. If you haven't done this before, all you need to do is join our Discord community. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. On the left-hand column, just scroll down until you see a, an area called the Coaching Corner. And uh, when you see that, there is 
a channel called the Wheel of Takeover. Just jump into the Wheel of Takeover channel and react to the message that Sun has put in there. That's all you have to do. Make sure that you have your login information available at your fingertips so you can DM that to me as soon as you win. So literally the first thing you do when you win, don't start scrambling for stuff. Just send me your login information. If you're in your account currently, just log out of your account. Send me the login information in a DM, uh, not in the chat, in a DM. And then I'll jump into your account and then you can tell me what kind of uh, takeover you would like. And then you can join the voice channel here um, so that you can mute your stream and hear me in real time. That's just more efficient rather than waiting to hear me on the stream. Or you can send it in the chat and get an entirely different type of account takeover. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. <laughs> Let's see. My clan boss keys. Okay. Good. No, this is a. Uh, I thought it was on my other account. That's This is my Emic and Newt solution here for Iron Twins. It's very nice. Works on three of the four affinities. Doesn't work on magic, unfortunately. I'm sure it could. I just don't have the gear to make it work there. Because where Newt, when Newt is weak affinity, he doesn't hit nearly as hard. And, um, and that becomes a problem. Body unfortunate. Yeah, it would be nice to have it be, you know, four affinities. And like I said, I'm sure it could work, but what happens is somewhere, I think the boss hits 40% or something like that, and all of a sudden it starts ignoring unkillable. Um, I think I'm, it's only on one particular skill. So you need to be close enough to be able to nuke the boss down once the unkillable's like become vulnerable so somewhere in the next turn he's going to kill somebody and then i need to get that bar from where it is yeah so so now he can now he can kill people but it's only on one particular skill so he'll cycle around to it let's see probably this next one there it is so now I've got to kill him before those unkillable buffs wear off. And it's just easier when he's weak affinity or neutral affinity. So if he's strong affinity, that newt doesn't get the job done. And then he just comes back around and starts killing other people. So but it's a really nice, nice solution for three affinity. Let's see a minute 32. Not bad at all. Man, my inbox is almost completely full. All right, so how are we doing on the reaction? wonderfully all right why don't we go doing? ahead and give them we'll give them 60 more seconds if you haven't reacted to the uh the message in the wheel of take for you want to do that now then we're going to go ahead and fire it up i think we're getting more variety for the reactions here today yeah like, i've noticed that a whole bunch of different reactions got some deep squats going on we've got some uh people calling out their flags got a couple of soap boxes that's always nice I always like it when there's a few bandits thrown in there. Appreciate that. Some bandits. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> there's always a couple of doges in there. A couple of noobs. <laughs> Are we ready to go? Let's do it. Fire it up. 
fired up. It is my niece's birthday, so I have to, uh, <clears throat> I can't go late today. I, guess. I have to end on time. Candyman, 52. Congrats. How do you reach out to CPR about a transfer request for me sent by Sweet Silence? Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I don't see a transfer request. Or at least not an active one. Yeah, what should happen is your... If if your clan officer, if your clan leader is recommending you for promotion, uh, they should reach out to the clan that they think you should be promoted to and talk to that clan leader. And then they can arrange it. And they should also mention it to you in case you're not interested. You know, like you, you're not forced to leave your clan. Um, and then um, and then if there's a spot, then we can move you if you're interested. All right, Candyman, if you're here, why don't you shoot me a DM with your login information? And we'll get this party started, right? <sighs> we'll get this party started quickly. Yeah, you, you are not required to be promoted. And there may not be a spot for you to be promoted. So it should be something that both both clans are discussing. Richtoff the Bold is an okay champion. Um, he's actually... I do... I have him on one account. I, I used him a little bit. Um, I didn't use him for a long time. Um, but so... He's got this destroys each target's max HP. So he can be nice for Scarab Boss, right? Because he has like a natural destroy set on him. Um, and then he also has this triple hit poison. So he can be good for like Clan Boss as a Clan Boss Poisoner. It's on a three turn cooldown, so it's pretty solid. Um, and then he gets extra damage. You can see critical damage increases by 20% for each poison debuff on the target, stacks up to 100%. So this A3 hits very hard. So he can be used as a boss killer, basically. Um, and he's particularly good in Scarab Boss. You'll see he's probably, oh, they don't, of course, they don't have Doom Power Bosses here. Um, but Demon Lord is probably his, his highest rating. And then, I mean, you can use him in other places. He's actually pretty solid against, like, um, Dragon. This A3 hits really, really hard and can actually just kind of push you through the, um, you know, the C Dragon Secret skill. Hey, Candyman. Richtoff and Lanatha Rilla are a mad scarab combo. I could see that. I could see that, actually. That would probably be great. And I imagine, like, if you're going to use Richtoff in uh, Scarab Boss, what you want to do is actually use him in a destroy set, because then you would get double destroy, right, max HP, and you would just unlock the damage so much faster. Um. But yeah, I could see him being used with an ally attacker, and Lanathril is great for Scare Boss because of his A1. Uh, he gets a he gets a shield as well. So Lanathril is in the High Elves, and his A1. Um, destroy the max targets max HP by thirty percent of the damage inflicted, so it does the same, and then also places a shield buff equal to ten percent of the champions on the ally with the lowest HP. So potentially, if you have Lanathril with a, sh a blood shield ring, you wouldn't need Riched off with a blood shield ring. Right? Because every time he used the A1, he would place the shield on Riched off, who's going to have less HP than him, because he's got a much larger HP pool. Um, he's also got a increased crit damage, 
and then you get the ally attack. And remember, on his ally attack, he uses his A1, and Richtoff would use his A1, so you're getting destroy from both A1s plus the destroy from the destroy set. It would be a pretty crazy duo. Yeah. I could see that. That would be really fun, actually. Yeah, so it sounds like Silence already talked to Civic, so you just need to fill out a transfer application so that Civic sees it, and then um, when there's a spot, you can get it. <laughs> Candyman, this is Candyman's first visit, or first, uh, first viewing of Takeover Tuesday. So congrats on the first time winner. Beginner's luck, I guess. All right, let's go ahead and get your account information in here. All right, y'all. Have fun. You're okay. going. Okay. All right. Um did that same weird thing where it deleted my play button for some reason in player and play when I log into a new champion or a new account I mean you're working as well trying to pay attention to okay um, well before you get distracted let me know what kind of takeover you're looking for we've got a level 56 account we have passed the Vizics, so past 270 days. So a, a more casual pace here, right? This is not a fast pace, but that's okay. Not everybody has the amount of time and energy to play and push their accounts as quickly as some others. Um, so for 56, we'll probably have a decent roster then, I would assume. Got three level 50 starter champions. That's not that bad for faction crypts. Get you a little ways going. You do have a Genbo down here who's not built. You've got an Eldor. Duke the Pierced with a four star blessing. Gorgorab. Got some nice epics. General takeover. You'd like to get better at clan boss. Any tips would really help. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's take a let's take a moment. So this is this is kind of an interesting takeover, right? Because anytime you're in this state where relatively low level but sort of advanced in terms of time in the game in terms of logins, you're going to have some more champions. Your gear won't be caught up to where your roster is likely to be at. That's just the way that kind of works. Um so Let's take a look at your arena team first. So let's just take a look at your Great Hall. Okay, so the Great Hall could use some work. You are getting gold medals, though. Um, by the way, today's a good day to advance, you know, your affinity bonuses. I mean, obviously, you can do that. So um, if you're building that first, because you're in a clan v clan, so you get points for it. Yeah, you have gems to get masteries, and you can basically six-star two more champions. Okay. Um, we'll talk about that in a second, but let's let's check out your arena team. You're in gold two right now. Okay, so you're going tanky. You've got the speed from... From Wukong, uh, you've got the HP burns from Artac, and then that activates the Rathalos. So really, you have three damage dealers here, plus a Sill of the Drakes. You have no decreased defense, 
No, you have a buff strip, but you have no decreased defense. Okay. So this would be a, a place I would focus. I would focus on getting to your to gold five. That's an that's a a reasonable area to focus for a couple of reasons. One is it's going to help you build your great hall faster, which is important. Um, that's going to help you everywhere. And I think two by doing that, like you're going to also kind of flesh out your roster right now, because it feels like you don't have all of the components of a complete roster. You have Rathalos, Ronda, Artak, Wukong at 60. So four of your six 60s are damage dealers. You have Scylla the Drakes, who's a great support, and you have Archbishop Pinthroy, who's a pretty good support as well. My guess is, you know, yeah, they're not fully booked. You've got Wukong, not fully booked. Art Artax fully booked, that's good. And then now you're booking, you know, you've got books into Ronda and Rathalos. You don't need all of these damage dealers. In addition, you've got 350s that are your starter champions. And so you have a lot of damage dealers, you know, and what you really need to do, you also have Dark Elhane, another damage dealer at 50. You need to, to chill out on the damage dealers for a bit and start focusing on supplemental champions, champions who bring things that you don't have. You need a reliable drop defense champion. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think he brought it. I was just checking. Um, you know, so you've got, you've got Duke the Pierce right here. He's got that 100% decrease attack and decrease defense. So he's a really good option. So this could be your decreased defense champion. Um, but you know, if you're curious, right, you can just go ahead and take a look and say, who are my decreased defense champions? So where's the decreased defense? There it is. Um, now Rathalos does bring a decreased defense 50% of the time. It's irresist it's an irresistible debuff on bosses, but it's only 50% and it's not an AoE. So typically I wouldn't do that. Um Gorlos here is also an AoE 100% drop defense. But he's quite squishier. He's like quite a bit squishier than Duke the Pierce. Plus Duke's got the four turn blessing. Uh, four star blessing. So this feels like a pretty easy call. Like this would be a, by the way, this is also the decrease attack. So it's going to increase your survivability. He also has a three target provoke. It's like one target, two random. That helps you in Hydra. It helps you in wave content. He's also got a decrease accuracy. Again, that can help you in Hydra. It can help you in some boss fights. Um, really good champion. Really, really good. It's going to help you in Faction Crypts as well. It's going to help you in Doom Tower Waves. So he feels like a pretty pretty smart next six star because I don't see I don't see another champion where I'd be like, okay, yeah. And now, here's the thing. He can also work in your arena team. We were just talking about arena team. He can work in arena. He can work in clan boss. Uh, he can work in other places. If you're not getting a consistent decrease attack in clan boss, that can be a problem. You do have a fairly consistent decrease attack here on our attack. It is 100% chance on a three-turn cooldown, so that's a nice, reliable one um, if you're using our attack in Clan Boss. If you're not using our attack in Clan Boss, which I'm not, he's not a great Clan Boss champion, but if you're not using him, then I would say Duke the Pierce would be, would be good. Um... You were thinking of six starring Vizix or Godseeker. Yeah, I mean, those both give you something you don't have currently. Um, Vizix brings you a lot. Vizix brings you turn meter decrease, decrease speed AoE, which is really valuable in a lot of places. An ally protect, the ally protect is a little bit tricky with Vizix. She's not inherently super tanky. Um, she's decently tanky, but ally protection is a way to get your ally protector killed in a lot of cases. Um, but she can be a solution or part of a solution for Dark Fae, uh, for Fire Knight. 
for you know wave content for hydra she's very good for hydra because she also has an aoe provoke and she's void affinity so she doesn't care about the affinity of the bosses so she's very good for hydra she's very good for a lot of places especially doom tower faction crypts she's going to be awesome there god seeker brings you some stuff but not not as much new stuff because you have so the drakes right so the drakes brings you healing and brings you a single target revive and god seeker basically does the same so although we were just running god seeker in sand devil's necropolis i think you know the one thing that she brings you that you don't have is a buff extension um so it decreases the duration of enemy buffs and increased duration of ally buff. So that's nice. Um, and you could potentially, like she might be a better healer for clan boss than Scylla the Drakes would be. Um, you get more healing out of her and you get that buff extension. You know, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that Godseeker is bringing you enough right now for her to be a top priority. Um, so I'm thinking decrease attack and decrease defense really makes Duke very good. Um, Yurgrim down here is kind of interesting because he brings you a, where is it? He brings a single target cleanse and heal. Uh, he also brings poisons so he can actually be, and continuous heals. He could be really good for clan boss as well because that's your, your stun cleanser. Um, obviously you have Skull Crusher, who's also really good for Clan Boss with the counter attack and, uh, the Perfect Veil. You have Gorgorab, who is really good for Arena. Let's look at your vault. Burn Geary is a bomb all solution. I mean, Holstring is an AoE 100% Hex Champion, which could be really good if you're trying to get into Hydra. You don't have an increased Attack Champion. Which is kind of funky. Like, that's typically a higher priority. I would say, though, that like if I'm looking at if I'm looking at arena, let's go look at arena again. Right, so this is is not a bad team, but I almost feel like if you want to go tanky, you should go tankier. You know, so like, do you bring in Archbishop Pinthroy? Do you bring in Vizix? Do you bring in Godseeker and Neri um, to have a second reviver? You know, do you bring in... I mean, Heliore actually is not a bad champion either for kind of defensive-based stuff. Um, he places a shield. He transfers debuffs. So it's like a cleanse. He's he's really I mean, he can be really tanky. He's not a phenomenal legendary, and I, I don't want to recommend that you build more legendaries because right now you're in a situation where you've really got let's see, you've got this one's not fully booked. This one's not fully booked. This one's not fully booked. 
Our attack is fully booked. Wukong's not booked at all. Pinthroy's got a book in him. You know, if you're thinking about building Vizix, she's got no books. So books are an issue with legendaries. You don't need books on everybody. Like, there are legendaries who can, you can get very good value out of without books. I think Wukong is a good example. His A3 is 100% chance of stealing buffs from enemies, right? It, so you're not, you don't need the books to improve the chance. It's not like a 75% chance that you need a book to 100% chance. So this is actually totally fine to run him without books. His passive works. You don't need books for the passive. So he gets not, he hits harder when you book him. He becomes more valuable when you book him. But out of all the champions here, he's a champion you can run without books and feel pretty comfortable with. I would, I would say Scylla the Drakes is also one of these champions. You've already got her booked decently. Um, but in reality, her passive doesn't need books, right? So her passive is a lot of, not a lot, but it's a significant portion of her power. And so as a result, you could probably get away without booking these two champions. At least for the time being, you'll eventually want to book them. They're both better when booked. But what I'm saying is you're not in a rush here. I think Ronda's a very good champion. But you've got the Rathalos four-star soul. You know, so if you can activate him with the HP burn, then he's probably going to be more valuable than Ronda in most places because uh, he's going to hit harder. However, she does have this um, block active skills, block pa passive skills. So she's always valuable for that. You do need accuracy, I think. To No, you don't. Never mind. You don't need accuracy for that. So, you know, again, if you're going to use this skill, potentially she doesn't need to be booked. Like, if that's where you're using her, you're booking her for damage. You know, you're booking her for cooldowns. But if you only need this skill once, you know. So, I would probably not book Rhonda any further at the moment if you want to go with Rathalos. Or if you want to go with Rhonda, then I would kind of move away from Rathalos a little bit. I think Rathalos is the better call, to be fair. Like, I, they're both good, but I think Rathalos is... He's got the four stars, and that, that matters. But I also think he just he just hits harder um, a little bit. He hits a little bit harder. If you have the HP burn on you know on your targets, he can hit a lot harder. Um, not as much utility as Ronda. Um, but, you know, so now you're looking at, like, who would be our next champion to book? Um, Might book Archbishop Pinthroy because he's one of your major supports. Or you could book out Vizix. If you're going to build her. But what I'm saying is like, you know, do we want to build another, do we want to build Heliord to six stars and then have to worry about that? Do we want to build Halsring, you know, and get him into Hydra and then worry about that? Do we want to build Rotos? Do we want to build Ignatius? Like these are good champions that are worth six starring. But you on it i mean more to McCabe, you don't have the books you just don't have the books and it's much much easier to get epic tomes than legendary tomes so we start looking at the epics and say who gives us stuff that we don't have here's a decreased defense we don't have that 100 percent. it's also the decreased attack we have that once so that's pretty good and a decrease accuracy, we don't really have. A provoke, we don't really have. This is an incredibly good champion to get into this roster, and it'll provide you with something that you don't have. Another champion to look at, actually, um, is Gorgorab. Gorgorab gives you the increased attack, which you don't have, and a turn meter fill, uh, which you don't have a lot of. Um, you do have, you do have High Katoon. You know, and he could do work for you in Arena as well. He also gives you an AoE revive which you don't have currently, you have single target revives. You know, so that AOE revive can be valuable in some places. Good arena champ. Yeah, now let's go look at your, let's go. If this was my account, what would I do to take the account to the next level? Trying to progress in dungeons and new tech. So, 
I, I'm always thinking from that angle, right? I, I, think, I think Duke is the next six star. I think he's absolutely the next six star. I think it's a little bit of a tricky situation because you have a lot of champions that could help you. You have a lot of epic champions that could help you in specific areas. I don't know your account perfectly. I don't know where all your, you know, your progress is coming from. But these are the champions that I'm looking at. Forget about the legendaries and let's and forget about the rares, in fact. Let's just look at the um let's just look at the epics. You need to focus on epics. Right? You need to get value out of these champions because you get more of these books and they do very good jobs and you're in the in the area of your account where where you need a lot. You still need to flesh out that roster. So, let's think about what these champions bring that 100% decrease in defense, decrease all that stuff we just talked about with Duke. You already know. Okay, he's awesome. Genbo, I would normally consider about for Arena, but you're probably all set with Arena between Ronda and Rathalos. So I would actually maybe not look at Genbo for a little bit. You've got Jareg, who is an ally protector with an increased defense. It's on a four turn cooldown. Um, Two turns uptime. He has a decreased attack on his A1 and some some sustain. This is very good. This is a very good champion for clan boss. So if you're struggling in clan boss and you're dying too early, this could potentially help you. He could actually work with Duke the Pierce, because then you're going to get that decrease defense and decrease attack. You get a second decrease attack. The downside being that they're both the same affinity. And Artak is your other decrease attack, and he's also magic affinity. So you're really leaning into magic affinity a lot there. Um, any debuff spread champions on the account? I don't know. I can look in a minute. Um, I like Aishma as a clan boss damage dealer. She's got a poison on her A1. She does have a weaken on her A2. Uh, and then she can increase the duration of debuffs and decrease the duration of buffs. Plus she e even has some sustain there she's a very good boss killer um you've got neldor who is great for fire knight it's got a triple hit on the a1 a quad hit on the a2 and even a double hit on the a3 that has a 75 percent chance when booked of placing a decreased speed uh and some sustain here so he can be good in a lot of places actually he can even be good in uh in Hydra. You've got Farrakhan the Fat, who is an ally attacker who brings HP burns and poisons plus a decreased defense. Really good for clan boss, uh, but also good for any bosses. Good for Fire Knight. You know, so if you're asking me, like, if this were your account, what champions would you be looking at? I'd be looking at Gorgorab, Farrakhan. Maybe Eurogrim, he'd be a little bit lower. Maybe Skullcrusher, he'd be down with Eurogrim. Neldor would be more like Gorgorab and Farrakhan. Same thing with Jareg, and then my top choice would be... But so, you know, my next six or seven six stars would probably be, be epics or rares. Let's go and look at your rares. Let's see if there are any standout rares here. I mean, you have Petrifia, who's very good for clan boss. You have Painkeeper, who can be good in a lot of places. Cooldown reduction is highly useful. You got Fellhound if you're looking for a campaign farmer. Campaign farmer isn't critical. It's just about speed. Yeah. So I, I feel really confident saying Duke the Pierce should be the next six star. And then at that point, I would say 
Maybe Gorgorab. Or Ferric in the Fat. Now, what you can do with that All right, you've got nine legendary tomes, 15 epic tomes. Yeah. It's, you know, CVC if you're going to be booking somebody. Like, I, I would say, you know, probably you want to book out your Rathalos. You know, you don't really need the A1 books. If you can get the A2 and A3 books, get the cooldowns, that would be helpful. Um, you know, the other option would be... I mean, you could finish off Solo the Drakes. It's not bad. You get the extra 10% debuff chance here on the A1, which is really nice for a slow. You get the, you know, the uh, the revive cooldown. But I don't think you need her. I don't think you need books on her for to get good value for now. As far as Legendary is concerned, you know, if... If you were going to focus on Vizix, I would I would book her out because you do want the cooldown and the debuff chances there. You want the cooldown there. The A1 is also, you do want those debuff chances. So you really need all of her books. Um, the good news is it's not a ton. It's like a decent amount. I think that's five, six. So it's only 10 and you have nine. So you could get her almost all the way booked. Um, and then it looks like Duke is basically mostly booked so if you can get this this cooldown that's important you don't necessarily need this extra 10 percent debuff chance so if you were able to save some books there for now you could rathalos wukong and then Vizix in terms of books uh I I can get behind the the Rathalos call. Yeah, I could I could say book him first. Um but I would skip Wukong. I don't think Wukong needs to be booked at all. Um for right now. Tarshan's pretty solid too. He's actually got an increased defense and a turn meter fill and 100% AoE weaken the provoke on his A1. But this increased defense and fills a turn meter of all allies by 20%. That's a really nice skill. There aren't that many champions that have that. Um, there is. Um, what's his face? Doom Screech. All right, it's a bigger turn meter fill. Um, but the rest of his kit isn't nearly as good. And he's a lot squishier. And Tarshan's pretty solid. Let's look at your clan boss team. All right, so right now, I mean, you're running 60s, right? Which makes sense. You want to run 60s. Um, I think the first two champions you're going to... I think the first two champions you take out of this are Scylla the Drakes and Ronda. I think you get the two of them out of there. This will give you the HP burn activation that you want it'll give you a decreased attack um and archbishop is providing you know your your support here um you might want to try something like like this kind of speed and then you could actually maybe um pending you could bring in duke here where 
There he is. That'll give you uh, more coverage on the decreased attack. It'll give you 100% decreased defense, which is, you know, again, Rathalos brings. Um, so you could try this. This would be okay. I, Vizix isn't really super helpful here, but you could go with the ally protect um, and try that. You know, you could bring in... I mean, you could do something like this and try to extend that that ally protect. You don't really have a great situation for clan boss. What I might look to do is like something in the future, do something more like um, not really great either. I was thinking about Fer how do we squeeze Farrakhan into this? So we would want Farrakhan in here. Maybe don't bring Aishma. Bring Farrakhan and, and Godseeker. You know, extend your extend your ally protection buff with Godseeker. She also provides a heal. You get the decrease attack, decrease defense. You got double decrease attack. Again, this is leaning a little bit heavily into um Spirit Affinity, the Ferric and the Fat will bring you a different affinity decreased defense, plus the poisons and the HP burn. You don't have a weak in here, but this could this could work okay. Yeah, Darren, uh, it's Farrakhan is the other one. There, there really aren't. It's not like we have a lot to choose from. You know, you can turn off our tax activation if you want. You could try to get a buff extender. You know, oh, I'm sorry, debuff extender. That that was one of the things I was thinking about with Ashma, right? Because Ashma actually increases the duration of the HP burn, so. I was thinking about that before. So if you did this, you know, Aishma is going to bring you poisons, bring the weaken, which you don't currently have, extend the duration of the debuffs. So it's going to extend the duration of that HP burn and actually decreases the bosses, the duration of the bosses increase attack buff. So she's really, she's really underrated. She doesn't get talked about a lot, but you could go with this kind of combo. This is not bad. You know, we don't have an ally protect or an increased defense champion then. We're kind of squishy, but we would just be going for a little bit of survivability and a lot of damage. Could work. But so I think you're a ways out from really unlocking clan boss, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay. You know, if you don't have the champions, you don't have the champions. You kind of take your time, you figure it out, you iterate. And every time you build a champion to six stars, you think about, you know, who's going to give me a lot of versatility. If you end up building Farrakhan in the fat, he's going to give you a lot of versatility against bosses. You know, he's going to give you versatility against the clan boss. Um, so it's like he can be used in a lot of places. So he could be t towards the top of the priority list. Um, you know, he would be better than Artak here. So you could bring in Farrakhan in the fat here. You know, the problem is when you lose our attack, now you've lost your decrease attack. Plus, Farrakhan doesn't bring that. Oh, you want me to... You're pulling down 8.56 million here. I mean, one of the things about this composition, right? I, I don't mind that you're stacked so heavily into the damage kind of theme here. Uh, but it's not optimized for damage because you don't have Rathalos fully booked. You don't have Rhonda fully booked. Um... 
So I think that, you know, like if you were going to go this way and say, okay, I want to lean into the damage and go really, really heavy on the damage, I might, you know, I might pull these two champions. They're not fully booked, you know, and look, look to get more, more turns and more damage in other ways. So, you know, even like, like this could be interesting. I don't know who's I don't know who's masteried. Wukong's not fully mastered. Pin Pinthroy is, so we'll probably leave him in then. Yeah. So what I would say is this your your roster, and this is an experience a lot of players have. Your roster distracts you with thoughts of other paths. Like the game is all about opportunity cost, right? The whole, the whole question, who should I six star next is about opportunity cost. I want to get value for the champion that I six star knowing that when I six star them, I can't six star anybody else. Right? So, so that's what this struggle is. Like, I, I need this champion to do as much as possible. Simultaneously, you have to not get distracted by all of the other champions. And you have to really focus on making sure that every six star that you build is serving as many purposes as possible, especially early on in an account. You're still, you know, level 50, whatever it was, 54, 55. What were we at? 56. So this is still relatively early, like you're probably into the mid game here at this point, but not that far into the mid game. The mid game is long. The mid game will probably take you up through, say, you know, account level like 80, you know, and then you'll enter sort of the later game, not even the end game. But but so when you think about how long it takes to level at this point, like it's slowed down already, it's going to slow down more. So there are a lot, there's a lot of time. There's a lot of time to go and build all the different things you need. So the way I always build a roster, and I always suggest building a roster, is I look at what I have, and I don't build more of the same. I just never build more of the same. And then when I do build a champion, I optimize that champion. So I have a priority of kind of skill lists that I need. I need a turn meter filler, speed booster kind of engine type champion. I usually use Deacon because he covers a lot of different roles, but High Contune can fill that role. So can Apothecary. Um, there are other champions who can do that. You know, one of the champions that you have who can kind of do that a little bit is Gorgorab. He can actually be used in a lot of content, right? I need a 100% drop defense. I need a 100% um, drop attack. I need an increased uh, increased attack, probably for my damage dealers. You know, I want an HP burn, preferably an AOE HP burn. I might want a weakened champion. Uh, if I can get an AOE weakened champion, great. I need a provoker. I need an ally protector. I need a healer. I need a cleanser. I need a reviver. Um, you know, I need all of these different roles. And so when I look at this, you know, when I look at this roster and I see, like, granted, this was this was a free login champion. This was a free login champion. This was a free login champion. So I'm not saying like you've done anything wrong here. These are all good champions. But you can see how we are so skewed towards damage right now. You know, so we want to get away from that. We want to start moving away from that. And we want to say, we've got our damage covered for the time being. Let's find ways to supplement those damage dealers and find solutions for all of the different places. We don't have Bommel solved here. We don't have Scarab Boss solved here. We don't have Iron Twins solved. We don't have Sand Devil's Necropolis solved. We don't have all of our dungeons to 25. Like the best solution we might have here is probably Spider. We've probably got Spider solved, right? Or we're close to it. Um, but even there, like, a little bit tricky, right? Like, we've got to bring Wukong, Rathalos, and Artak. Probably have to bring Scylla the Drakes. So it's like, you know, let's go look at Spider. Yeah, so you got 20 solved, right? Hey, this, is, this is an interesting... This is not how I would probably go here. But if it's working, great. Um... Let's see if we can build a Spider 20 team. I don't know how fast this, this 
champion. I'd probably do this, 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 this. Spider 20 is uh, spirit affinity, right? So I probably wouldn't bring Rathalos because he's going to be your Spiderling target. You could bring in Helior here. Hakatoon's going to be this the spiderling target right now. Yeah, I can check the Oh, I forgot that our tech does that. It's so annoying. He doesn't open with his. He doesn't open with his HP burn, which he should. I'll HP burn now. It'd be nice to have that slow on the boss, you know, to get that slow out there. I don't know if I don't know if Silva Drakes has enough accuracy. I also don't know if Haikatoon has enough accuracy. They both have slows on their A1s. They are different affinities. That that can be helpful. This is there's that slow. Uh this is where that revive cooldown would be helpful on Silla the Drakes. We're happy with with Wukong being the spiderling target. That's what we want. Because when he dies, he can revive himself. There we go. Not bad. You know, definitely would be better with Godseeker and Hikatoon at 60 each, but not bad. You know, minute 38. Uh, obviously, your other team was a little bit faster, you know, or in terms of turns. Right, we did 70 turns versus 33 turns. You can see this is the best time. I don't know how many turns you actually took on the other on the other team. And you could mess around with this team. I don't think that you need Godseeker and Eerie here. You could potentially, um, you know, you could bring Pinthroy back. You could see how that works. You could bring Rathalos back. The thing is, we're trying to use the HP burn, so I don't want Rathalos killing all of the, um, all of the Spiderlings. Vizix could be an interesting option here. Might try that, actually. Let's try Pinthroy. Let's try him. Yeah, we want Wukong to be the target, right? Like, if Silva Dr Drake is going to die here, but then Wukong should become the target. And when Wukong becomes the target, that's that he's the perfect Spiderling tank. Because even if he dies, you don't even have to waste the revive on him. He just comes back. You can see the HP burn sticking away. And if we had some turn meter decrease for the boss here, that would be really good because then that would give us more, you know, time with the HP burns on the Spiderlings. All right, Pinthroy is becoming the target, but he seems pretty tanky. And if he can just survive, if he's just like naturally tanky, then great. And we can just keep bringing Hikatoon back. She keeps dying and then Pinthroy survives and we, we just work our way around. And the HP burns tick, 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 tick. A 
little bit of heals. Looks like it's going to be about the same as we had with Godseeker Neri. Yeah, we would set up an AI for him to do the, the burn in a different order. Again, decent. Let's go take a look at the champs here. I do think High Katoon is valuable. So, you know, maybe because you don't really have another speed lead. It's always good to have a turn meter filler and kind of engine to your team. This is a champion worth investing in. Even if you keep her at five stars, she's worth investing in. You need to get her out of HP boots and get her into speed boots. Let's look here at this. Okay, so. You know, you've got these. They've got accuracy and resistance. And this is, this is a really good boot for her. Let's, let's look and see what she's wearing. Single speed roll there. Single speed roll there. Crit rate, single speed roll. And then she's got one extra speed. And the chest plate's actually okay. That's not bad. I think I think she'd be she should be in one of these two probably or this one whichever one rolls the fastest This is pretty good shield for her. You want accuracy on High Katoon. This crit rate glove I would probably pull her out of the crit rate gloves and like this defense glove could be really nice. This defense chest piece might be nice. I mean she's already got Flat HP, so it depends if, if it were faster. This would be really nice. This is the one you probably want her in, that HP. Let's see about her perception gear. That could be nice. I'd prefer some accuracy on it if possible. This is this is a nice shield. This could be a good helmet. So if you don't want to pull somebody off, I might do this. And then let's look at her shield. It doesn't, oh, it doesn't have speed. There's no speed on the shield. It does have accuracy and defense. It's not bad. But you'd prefer something with speed for her. I would probably pull I'd probably pull this off of Farrakhan. I'd probably pull this off of Farrakhan. Because Farrakhan needs accuracy and he needs preferably crit rate and crit damage. So I would probably put that on her. And then Probably that. This. And then one of these other weapons. I like this one that has accuracy. Alright, I want you to I want you to look at something. Look at the stats over there. Okay. We have five pieces or four pieces of unrolled gear. We have we haven't rolled at all. 
All right. And we have the shield at eight. And we've already picked up 10 speed and 16 accuracy. Now we've traded things away. We traded away some crit rate. We've lost a lot of HP. We'll get some of that back, right? She'll actually be tankier in this build once it's all done. So if we just take these up, let's just take these up to eight. I'm not going to waste a lot of your silver or anything, but let's just take these up to eight. Let's see how, how much we get here. That's a tag that unfortunately did not roll into speed at all. Speed and accuracy, that's beautiful. Double speed, perfect. All right, now we're up to 195 speed. You can see we've picked up almost 200 defense. We've gotten some of our HP back. Remember that she still has more HP here on this. She's got more defense here. We're gonna get more defense. She's still got more speed here. You can glyph all of this accuracy. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna take these up to 12. That didn't roll the right way. This could, if this gave us accuracy, that'd be good. HP percentage would be good. Def flat defense is not awful. I really wish this glove had rolled into speed, but that's okay. Accuracy there, that's beautiful. And I would take these to 16 today. It's a CVC. Why not? I know, there's an artifact enhancement event tomorrow, huh? Okay, we won't. 195. You're going to get an additional 14 speed out of this. That takes you to 209. Once you glyph all of these, you can probably get 229, 230. You get a banner and you glyph the banner, you're going to get, a, get to 250. You can get High Katoon from 167 to 250. She is an engine. What I mean by that is she literally makes your team move. Right? Like, she's the engine in your car. She's pushing your team forward. The speed boosts, the turn meter fills. This is where you want to run this champion. I could tune, if she's, if she's performing her role, she needs to be one of the fastest champions on your account. She doesn't have to be the fastest. But for your account, she probably does. She probably should be the fastest champion on your account for now. You don't have a deacon or an apothecary or uh, an arbiter or... Um, a seeker, you, you don't have any of those engines. This is your only turn meter engine, right? So she needs to be the fastest champion on your account. And I would say running her somewhere around 260 would be a really good goal. You, unfortunately, we didn't roll into the speed here, so you still have speed rolls available there. You know, you might, ha you might hit this when you take it to 16. This is nice. This is decent. You know, this is decent. Again, you could roll this one to 12 and maybe hit speed there. So you, you have an outside chance of getting up to like 260, 270 even. That would be beautiful. Take Haikatoon up to six stars after Duke the Pierced. Take these two epics up. And now, what were you missing before? Well, you didn't have a speed lead. You didn't have a turn meter filler. You didn't have a speed boost. Haikatoon, all of those things. Plus, she brings you a slow on her A1. Plus, she brings you turn meter decrease on her A3, an AoE turn meter decrease. So she's bringing a lot of tools. Duke de Pierce, 100% decrease attack, 100% decrease defense, decrease accuracy. Um, he's tanky. He brings you uh, a provoke, right? So these, again, are tools that you don't currently have. So when you're building a champion, I'm going to equip these, by the way. I think, I think these are good enough to equip. Let's go ahead and just do that so you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to go check your Ferric in the fat real quick. He wasn't, he's not, he's not ready. You know what I mean? He's not ready to go. But so let's get a shield on him at least, just so you have an idea that you want to put him in something. None of this is great. This is probably the best one. Do that. All right. So. Anytime you build a champion, think about what their purpose on your account is and then build them in that direction. So here we've got Duke de Pierce. What's his goal? Well, first of all, he's your drop defense champion, so he needs accuracy. He's a provoke champion, so he needs accuracy, right? He's a decreased attack champion. He's a decreased accuracy champion. He needs accuracy. 
He's a defensive based champion. Let's say you can see he's defensive based. All of his skills hit based on defense. So the tankier you get him, the harder he's going to hit too. Awesome. He doesn't need to do damage at all. Crit rate, not right for him. What do we want? Defense. What else do we want? HP. What else do we want? Accuracy. Like these are the three stats, probably not in that order. And then speed, right? So those are the four stats we're going to worry about. We want speed and accuracy first. Those are the most important. Then we want defense and HP next. Those are the next most important. After that would be resist. After that, maybe you're worried about crit rate, right? We don't care about him hitting. That's not his, that's not his role. That's not what he does. So when do we want it? <laughs> we want it now. Um, so yeah, what, we're, you know, what we would do here as a build is we would say, first of all, speed boots. Yeah, let's start with the speed boots. It's always good to start with the speed boots. Accuracy speed boots, six star HP percentage, great. That's really nice on them. I'm looking for percent. I don't see anything that's better than that. So that's, you know, this is something that we're going to go ahead and slot on to him. Just for the time being. If I could get perception, perception would be my first choice. If I could get perception boots with accuracy substats, that would be really, really good. So that's where I would go for. But, Six star speed boots in the accuracy set. Nobody's using them. It's got HP as a substat roll. HP percentage. So good. So we would do that. Now that means we can look for another. Actually, let's just do this. Here's the second thing. We want them tanky. HP percentage and defense percentage. That's what we want in these two spots. We want to look for stuff that has. Like sets that are going to help us right we also want speed we always want speed let's see again if we can get perception great if we can get something with speed as a substat awesome let's see This is beautiful. This other champion, I don't know who, you know, where you use that champion. Maybe just faction crisp, but this is a really nice piece. Right? We were looking at this piece. This is pretty close. These are really, really close. I might even have swapped them. I might have put this on High Katoon if I had seen it before and saved this for Duke the Pierce. Because this is actually better for Duke. And this is better for High Katoon. Um, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and steal that. This is pretty solid too. So now we have HP. If you have HP as a chest plate, we want defense for the gauntlet. So let's go ahead and steal that. Now we need to do the top three. We're looking for speed as a subset. If we can get speed and accuracy on a piece, we want to do that. Here's a piece on your Neldor, who again is not built. Speed, accuracy, and resistance. That's beautiful. We also have this piece, which we could roll up and use if we wanted. Now I can say, okay, maybe if I have some tanky pieces somewhere. Oh, we've got, you know. Again, if I could get into perception, this might be worth it. Worth it. Let's go ahead and try that on. Now I'm going to drop the accuracy. I'm going to look for just a helmet that has speed on it, let's say. Nope. This is a nice piece. I could try that. And then maybe we'll try a weapon in the same set. HP, speed, and HP. Accuracy would be better if we could get a little bit of accuracy onto them. Let's just do a set. If we have to sacrifice a little bit of speed that's not the worst thing not the best thing this is nice probably put that on him that's also nice depending on which one you want to take from you know okay so let's go ahead and take this up to 12 double hp that's beautiful 
Uh, I forgot. I forgot. Duke the Pierce needs 100% crit rate. Maybe. Maybe not. Um... You don't place a decreased defense unless you get the critical hit. My bad. My bad. Yeah, I just caught that the same time you guys did. Try it again. I think we're going to stick with this chess piece. This is nice. We're going to get an additional 21% crit rate out of this gauntlet when we take it to 16. So we can stop at 79. I don't know if you have mysteries. If you have, haven't put the masteries on, you could stop at 74, actually. All right, so now we're looking for these two pieces. And... I wouldn't mind. I mean, I like, I like the, um, I like the resilience set a lot. This is a relatively nice piece for him. This wouldn't be too bad. I would prefer perception. I really would. I think perception is the the better. Okay, so now you're up to 194 speed, a little bit more HP, a little bit less defense. The attack doesn't matter. Crit rate is fine because you can get, like I said, you can get 21% more crit rate here. So that would put you at 102. Crit damage doesn't really matter. We don't care about the crit rate for the crit damage. Crit damage is a bonus. We care about the um, landing the debuffs. Okay, so we could forge more perception gear. We could try that. I, don't, I, I like this setup for Duke. You're going to get an additional 16 speed here. That's going to get you to 210. You could roll... No, you can't roll. You could... You're basically maxed out there. You could glyph, though. 
You could probably glyph another 15 speed plus the banner could get you another, you know, 30 speed. You could end up somewhere around 230 to 240, which would be a really nice place for him right now. This accuracy is low, though. I don't like this accuracy, and we don't have a ton of accuracy substats. So you're going to need accuracy on your banner. It's going to be, need to be an accuracy banner with speed, and then it's going to, you're going to need whatever. It doesn't matter what kind of amulet you take as long as it has accuracy on, as a substat, but I would probably go HP or defense, um, and then with accuracy as a substat. Between those two, you should be able to get to around 250 accuracy plus your, plus your glyphs. So when you six star him, that's what you're looking to do here. Looking to get to about 250. If you could get to 275, that'd be better. Um, 275 accuracy, because then you can really handle all the content that you need. But 225 is what you need for all the dungeons up to stage 25. So two, 225 is going to be your minimum. And then 275 is going to allow you to you know, deal with all the clan bosses and some of the levels of Doom Tower, uh, all of Doom Tower normal. 275, I think, is, I think the top floor to 120 of Doom Tower is like 255 or something like that. Um, so that's going to allow you to do Doom Tower normal. So this feels pretty good. Again, you know, you're going to get more stats back when you when you go ahead. And I, j I literally just put that, I didn't I just put that shield on Farrakh in the Fat? I can't, man. But so this feels a lot better. Going to go ahead and do that. So, you know, if you can forge more perception gear, yeah, I would, I would do this. You know, if you can look for specific pieces, absolutely. Definitely use, if you're going to go down and do the four and five star pieces, use your um, rank charms, you know, um, to make sure that you're getting as many five star pieces as possible. If you can get into faction crypts to get more of the legendary materials do that perception gear is going to be where it's at for your account like your account needs a ton of great perception gear you want perception gear you know for wukong you want perception gear for like even ronda needs accuracy right no she doesn't never mind um artak needs accuracy you know Vizix needs accuracy Ikatoon needs accuracy uh ferrick in the fat needs accuracy duke the pierce needs accuracy um so all the champions that we've talked about building, not Gorgrab, he doesn't need accuracy. You can put accuracy on him because of his A1, but you don't really care. Godseeker doesn't need accuracy. But everybody else needs accuracy. So, you know, perception gear is really going to be a focus for your account. Um, you know, Neldor, Aishma, all these champions we've talked about building, most of them need accuracy. Not all of them, but most of them. And they all need speed. So. Um, what we want to do also is consider the roster when you're gearing as a whole. Think about this now. Like, the backbone of most of your team. Actually, forget about the backbone of most of your teams. Forget that. Here, here's your dungeon team. Let's go to a dungeon. We're changing this team. This is your team now. This is the team. High Katoon going fast. 250, 260, 270. Good in arena, good in PvP. You're always going to go before the waves. You're always going to go before the boss. You are fast enough to go before... Be, you are fast enough to go before every single boss up to stage 25, and go before every single wave up to a floor 120 of Doom Tower and every boss in Doom Tower. At 260, you're fast enough to go faster than anybody. Anybody. Even hard Doom Tower. Once you start getting there, you're going to be faster than almost every single one of those floors and bosses as well. Right? So this means that your team, the rest of your team, can run slower. Now, you want Duke the Pierce going next. Why? Because he's the AoE drop defense and AoE drop attack. He's also the provoker. He should be the second fastest in this rotation. Who goes after that? 
It could be either Silla the Drakes or Artak, depending on how you prefer to run the team. I like Silla the Drakes pretty fast. That gives you an opportunity to AoE stun, and it's going to give you more heals. So I'd probably run her third fastest. Then you have Artak fourth fastest, and then you have Rathalos as the slowest. Rathalos needs those HP burns out there, so he wants to be slower than Artak. That's fine. And because you're running High Katoon at, say, 260, remember she gives a 15% turn meter boost to everybody, and she gives that increased speed. So now you can run everybody else, say, between, like, 190 and 240. That's sort of the range that you want to be in. I would run Duke the Pierced up at, at the high end, you know, Scylla the Drakes towards the high end, and then you can run Artak and Rathalos between, like, 190 and 220. That's going to be a nice, really nice spot for them. Eventually. You're going to want to increase those speeds. You're going to want to push them a little bit, but that's a really good place for you right now. This team will probably clear every dungeon for you just fine, including Spider, including, including Ice Golem. The one thing you have to worry about in Ice Golem is you might nuke yourself, but there's a really nice adjustment you can make from this team. This is beautiful. This is an HP burn team that has an AoE stun, an AoE provoke, an AoE slow, an AoE decrease attack, an AoE decrease defense, an AoE HP burn, an AoE turn meter reduction. This is an insanely good team. This, is, this will do everything that the other team can't do, this team will do, right? AoE uh, ally protection. Like, this has so much that you want to do. And when you get to, you know, clan boss, I'm sorry, when you get to Hydra, you take these five champions and Rathalos and you put that in and that's your six man team, right? The only thing that you're going to lack from this particular group is you don't have a block buffs debuff or a buff strip, but that's what this guy's for. Right? So if this is enough with the provoke, if you're going fast enough, you pull this guy out and you put, put him in there. And now you've got a Hydra team. So you've got every dungeon covered. You've got every Doom Tower wave covered. You've got most of the Doom Tower bosses covered. You've got Hydra covered. And you're doing that with six champions. That's how you efficiently build this roster moving forward. Now, yes, clan boss, we, we, it's a little bit of a mess there. Yes, we have other things that we need to do, like Sand Devil's Necropolis. but. This is how you optimize. You just build one champion at a time, get to six champions or seven champions that can do 95% of the content decently well, and then you start looking for specialists. Then you start looking for other solutions. Then you start thinking, okay, now I need to get Bommel. So do I have Burn Geary? Do I have Lady Annabelle? Do I have Vogoth? Do I have Master Butcher? Start thinking about that champion. All right, I need to clear out, you know... um. I don't know. Like, I need, I need a better arena team. All right, then I can start thinking about Gorgorab. You know, he's a mini arbiter. So this, this is how you put this all together. But this team right here has three substitutions for these spots, right? Basically, like we were just saying, this is your fast clear. It's not going to be super fast, but it's going to be decently fast. This is your fast clear. This is your slow clear. This is your buff strip. That's beautiful. Is it worth ha uh, investing in a high Katoon for the speed lead role if we already pulled and maxed an apothecary instead? Depends. They do synergize decently well together. If you stagger their increased speed buffs, you can use both of them in a uh, Demitha speed tune. It's a two to one speed tune with Demitha or. You can just get to a two to one with anybody really for clan boss. Um, so they do work together. They're a little bit inefficient if you don't speed tune them correctly. Um, so what I would say is if you had a speed lead, if you have a speed aura from somebody else, then use Apothecary, right? So for instance, if you have, I don't know, if you have a Deacon Armstrong there or if you have um, like White Queen and Korra, right? If you got that fusion done, uh, she's got a 19% in all battle speed aura. So you can use her there, and then you would use your apothecary. If you don't, then I would say use them together. You can even use High Katoon at 50 for a while, um, and then eventually transition to somebody else. 
there are a lot of speed aura champions in the game, but you can always just, you know, come in here and do a little check for your speed auras and try to find somebody who has a speed aura in all battles. You know, right here, we've got a, um, we've got a Mortu Macabre who's actually got a really nice speed uh, aura. It's 24% in all battles. Um, you know, this is going to be Arena. This is all battles. It's only 10%. This is all battles. It's 20%, which is pretty nice. It's Arena. This is Arena. You know, so you can look for it. You want you want an aura some, somewhere. But Apothecary is great, right? And Apothecary works better than Hikatoon in some places. Uh, when you need that extra sustain or you want that triple hitter A1 or whatever, you know. Yeah, so I, I think I think this is I think this is the team moving forward, Candyman. Yeah, you can decide if you want to spend the gems on masteries. That's okay. I think it's really a, a, a much more efficient to run in the um, the Minotaur, like to run Minotaur. But you need a, approximately 155 runs per champion. So what can happen is if you're gonna if you're gonna six star two champions, let's say you have two fifties and you're gonna six star both of them, or even let's say let's say you you six star Vizix. And you five star Duke the Pierce right now because you have the chickens for it. You could throw both of them into uh, Minotaur. You know, you could even do something like, um, depending on, I don't know who's fully masteried, but, you know, I would just do something like. If you have a solo carry. If Artac can get the job done on his own, then I would do this. If not, then maybe you do something like, you know, like this. Right? And just literally, like, get the XP and the Masteries all together. Say, you know, I need X number of scrolls. It's going to be roughly 400 runs. That means I need to spend five and a half thousand energy here over the next week and a half or something or two weeks. And if you're talking about gems... Let's say you're getting masteries on three champions. That would be 2,400 gems. But if you look at it in terms of energy, right? 40 gems gets you 126 energy. Um, so you need roughly... seventeen hundred gems-ish. Um, and that would be if you weren't also using your regening energy. So if you just use the energy that regens and your refills and whatever, maybe you spend a thousand gems and now you've saved yourself 1400 gems, right? And you can use those in other places. You can use those to help you with fusions. You can use those to get more ancient shards. You can use those to do, you know, get extra keys for iron twins. If you're grinding that or whatever it is. You know, use that for energy in Sand Devil's Necropolis or during a Fire Knights tournament or something like that. So if you want to spend the gems on Masteries, you can. Uh, but it is much more efficient, especially if you're if you're leveling multiple champions simultaneously to do it in the Minotaur's uh, keep or whatever it's called. Labyrinth. Yeah. Um, all right. So do you have any questions? You've got good champions, and I don't think any of you the champions that you've built are a waste. You haven't you haven't overbuilt any bad champions. Right? Even your starter champions here will eventually just be valuable for you in terms of secret rooms and faction crypts. Because you always want at least one good rare in a faction crypt uh team, and the, the star champions are amongst the best. So that's good. Optimize your legendaries, whichever legendaries you think you're going to stick with. I would probably go Rathalos and Vizix because I think Rathalos is almost done. So optimize him. And Vizix gives you something that nobody else gives you. And I think you can get away with Sun Mukong and Sill of the Drakes without books for a while. And also Archbishop Pinthroy without books for a while. You know, after you get these two booked, then you might want to start thinking about booking out Wukong and probably Sill, you know, and then I would leave Pinthroy for last. Um, I wouldn't look to run up anybody else, although Mortu Macabre and Rotos are both really, really good, and we already talked about Heliors, you know, having some potential value for you. But don't rush into more legendaries. You don't need to do that. Um, if you do want to 
upgrade another legendary. I think more to Macabre can be very good um, without a book because all he needs to really do is unlock his skill. And once he unlocks his skill, that's huge. And that's also a speed aura for you. Um, but he's not like, I don't know if he's an everywhere kind of carry with, if he's not booked, like he's more of an arena specialist. If he's not booked, if he's booked, then you're going to have more value out of this a two. Um, you know, and again, are you going to use him instead of Rotos? Probably not. You know, and if you want to activate Rotos, you need to not Rotos. I'm sorry. Rathalos. Is he better than Rathalos? Probably not. And you're going to want to run Rathalos with Artak, right? Because that's almost a, a must based on your account. Um, so those are your two damage dealers. Yeah, I think you're good to go. I think you're good to go. You save on average about 150 gems per champ. I think you're right. It's like on average, it's between like 140 to 180 or something like that. So it's right around 150 gems per champ. Um, but you also get silver. You also get silver. You get not a lot of silver, but you get a decent amount of silver. So I think per champion, it's like two and a half million silver. Something like that. So if you're running up two champions, you're talking about five million silver in addition to the gem save. It's not insignificant. It takes a lot longer. It just takes a ton. It takes so much extra time. So if you need if you need to build a champion right now and get value out of them today, because like Hydra's ending and you want to you want to get a better key in Hydra, it's worth spending the extra gems to get that those masteries in some cases. Um, but if you can be patient and have the time. Uh, especially if you're a free-to-play player, you're better off running a ton of Minotaur. I, I, I got the Masteries on like my first 86 stars through Minotaur. Like I literally didn't buy a single Champion's Masteries for the first 80 on my main account. Um, and then I started buying them because I was making content. And I was like, I need, I need to buy more Masteries. But you really don't need to. You just need to be patient. And you need to devote a lot of time and energy over there. Okay. All right. So that is it. Like I said, it is my niece's birthday. So I have to make sure that I uh, am available in just a few minutes. We're going to give him a call and sing happy birthday and do all the fun stuff. Um, she is two today or yesterday. Was she two yesterday? I hope it wasn't yesterday. Might have been yesterday. <laughs> but I think they're having the, the birthday party today. So um, anyway, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, I will be back next Tuesday for another Takeover Tuesday. I am suspending all of my other live streams for the time being. I may periodically jump on at an unscheduled time just to have some fun and hang out with you folks. Um, but in the combination of getting ready for the baby and then trying to do the raid madness and finish the HH challenge and all of that stuff, uh, the live stream is, is the thing that had to be sacrificed. The live stream schedule had to be sacrificed. So I will be back next Tuesday. I'm not going to abandon the, the Takeover Tuesdays because it's my favorite stream. It's the most popular stream with the viewers as well, I think. Um, and yeah, that's what's going on. Raid Madness. I think the voting's closed, unfortunately. I think the voting's closed. You could go over there and check and see if the voting's open, open today, but I think the voting will open tomorrow for the final four. Uh, so you could check the results. The, the Elite Eight is done and you are, sorry, the Epic Eight is done. You could go check the results. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Let's raid YST and Nubs. Yeah. Is YST, is YST, um, Is he streaming right now? Is anybody streaming right now? We could we haven't done a raid before. We can do a raid. That'd be fun. Nub is is live. Let's see if we can um let's see if we can go raid Nub. I gotta remember how to do this. I haven't I've only done this once before. Um, hang around don't don't go anywhere just give me a minute
Don't go anywhere. We want to, we want to, we want to do this. This would be fun. Oh, edit. Okay. I, that's all I got to do. Edit. Um, let's see. All right. Somebody needs to ask Nub Raids to, uh, let me into his live stream. He's like, let me drop you up yeah. in my, on a four Lambo. Let's see if this works. We're losing, probably losing people by the moment. If, I, if I'd been able to do this uh, <laughs> a couple of minutes ago, we would have been, we would have been fine. I did manage to set up last time, so if you go and go on your YouTube studio. Oh shit, okay, well let me pick my champions first. Uh... Can I do it from here, or what do I have to You'd do? You'd have to open up a separate tab. Okay, give us a sec. What are we going to do? We're probably banning the Armands. He's probably banning Ultimate Death. He's Knight. doing uh, Live Arena. Much I don't know if you can hear him through my against. stream right Let's now. Let's be real, you're going to choose Yumiko. <laughs> let me see. Let me let me mute Could that you for you guys. That probably. Which one? Um, this Archer. guy. This guy? Yeah. Bill. He's not very good against Wukong, for a but it's okay. <laughs> Maybe we ban the... Do we just pick, like... Do we just go Torment and we ban the Seafy and freeze them? Can do. That might not work. You have Harima. Oh. This is killing... Yeah, this this is absolutely killing the performance not of my computer confident. right now. I don't like, I'm tanking so hard. Uh, Wait, no, yeah, the real sure. question is... Right, how do I does, do does Mr. Nubby have a Duchess? So I go... What do I have to do to give him per Can I just add as moderator? No, no, no. You have to go into your studio. Yeah. So open up a separate studio. And then go to settings. Then it will be on permissions. And then, no, no, no. Panel. Then one of these ones. Might be, yeah. I know. It's, I think it. Is it advanced settings? One of these ones here. Go down. <laughs> okay. We'll find it. On community. I got it. So, so, oh wait, there we go. Sound, you're no. a mod. Hey. So, there we go. No. Oh, here's people I banned. <laughs> no, wait. Oh, li okay. Live redirects. So wait, go down more. So in there, you see what's the specific channels? Just, uh, just add call red. Okay, we need to ban something. Shit. <laughs> look, look at your block I banned, the, I banned the fucking wrong thing. <laughs> ban word. This, this is chaos board. right now. <laughs> This is chaos. Uh, I love it. Uh, what? Oh sake, fuck! Ba we banned the wrong fucking thing. <laughs> fuck! Fuck! Oh, Bro, man. call red plays. Dash. You can add me there as well. What there? Maybe next time. Fuck! You don't deserve it. We just fucking banned the wrong thing. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're gonna lose now. But our man's is a he's, he's a fine he's a fine one to ban. Okay. No, what I was saying before is, this is not like a normal collab, like a crop house. That makes sense, doesn't it? I, I can touch his Barney, look. You can't touch my one. Oh, your Barney, because everyone calls you that, right? A what? Your Barney on your head. Barnet? What? In your comments. I don't even know what you're saying. Some, you know what I'm saying. No! No? Let's see if this no. works. You don't read your comments enough. Oh. People say, Mr. W's got a Barney. A Barnet? Yeah, I think that means it's like a... Uh, what's the word? Like a messy hair? Oh, okay, so, okay. I, I do have messy hair. Not wrong. What do you call that uh, in, oh, in we Ireland? Might, we might actually win. He's got a fucking bolster. He brought in bolster set against Narcisse. That's nice. 
Didn't work. I think that's why I think it <laughs> was work. mullet that I might have read. A that, mullet. Oh yeah, a mullet. No, I think some people yeah. call it a bonnet as well. I'm pretty sure. I don't. I don't. I could be wrong. I don't actually have a mullet though. That's the weird. So thing. what does mullet mean? Just messy hair. No, a mullet is like. I'll get you a picture. Get you a picture. A mullet. Son of a bitch, you sheeped him. <laughs> this is a mullet. Like. Like this, this is a fun stream. I'm enjoying this like stream. Long on the back, basically. Oh, long on the back and short on the sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's that? Wait, I can't I believe to, he's sheep. I need to research Barney now because I feel like I've heard that phrase. Didn't work. Did I save the settings? Oh. Uh, uh, I think so. Channel. Uh, no. Community. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Wait, no. Uh, live I did, yeah. Specific channels can redirect my content. Yeah. Weird. I'll put in YST as well. YST Conservatory. Ooh, YST Scarface 1. <laughs> That's you. Here, you're in as well, YST. Ooh, ooh. Just don't put porner. It's a, it's a blocked word. Who I think happens? I was wrong with the Barney, you know. I don't know what I read there. I... Who knows? I feel like Let's see if we can do this. I appreciate your patience, me. guys. That's I just want to make sure we can do thing it. to say. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Barn it. It could have been mullet, though. Too. Let's see if we can kill Seafy. No! No, we cannot. Uh, this is rather awkward. I mean, if they don't kill Ancora, Come on. he we will be okay. Oh, don't Why kill Ancora. Oh, he killed her. Tell Nubs Hegemon is a Hydra God. Mr. Nubby, Hydra. <laughs> Hegemon's a Hydra God. No. It's true. Look, 23 months member though. That's yeah, Gra Grat's, Grat's a legend. Damn. Grat is a legend. Okay. I think but he added revive my, Narcy, so my other channel. Back and he gets I have a channel called Cold Red Play. I don't think he did Cold Red Play. That, work, that works. Whoop, whoop. Hey, it all worked out. Cold Red is forgiven. Wait, did his raid work? Uh, I did do the right channel. You just. No, he did the right channel. He did the right one. I've seen it. Yeah, but it's not working. So. Oh well. Well, I'll try and figure it out for next time. Unless there was a box you had to tick to allow people to do it. Could be. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's guess who? It's our man. What a what a surprise. Wait, where's his soul? Someone's not been doing so, it. Yeah, <laughs> so, oh man, this guy. He's almost 4k points as well. Where's his soul, bro? Without the soul, it's just an arms. <laughs> man. There we go. Oh, drive on the There we M3. go, guys. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for waiting. We're going to send it over to Nub. Congratulations. Um, well, that's a lot of damage. I think Thorman is definitely a good pick. You know, I don't even have Hegemon built. I, I don't know what Hegemon's wearing. Let's just put Hegemon in, will we? Wait, no, wait. You, Hegemon's a Hydra God, though. Yeah, Hegemon, Hegemon is a Hydra God. Lock him in. JKG branded in the building. He's a Hydra God. Lock him in. I think it worked. That's like my stand. Whenever JPG comes in, is that something worked? Uh, do we just ban. What do we ban? Suzanne is probably the most. Well, I think it worked. Yeah, folks. If, she, if she does the extra turn into George. Yeah. 